Well, 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 welcome everybody to day 14. And as far as I can make out, a very special day. Day 14, that's two weeks in exactly. Uh, well, if we ignore the fact that several episodes have been days and days apart. <laughs> uh, day 14, it's a finale. As far as I can make out, here we're going to be concluding the story. Um, I might be totally wrong about this, but as far as I remember, what we have is this instance where we found the Bond now, so we'll see what happens with the Mabon stuff after he ran away. And then I think there might be, like, a rift sequence that we have to do somewhere in the middle. And then after that, we're done, I think. Uh, then, you know, you got the final mission and the, the outro. The outro is actually very long, and I alluded to it in commentary in a previous part. So, uh, without jumping the gun, I guess I'll stop myself talking there. And, uh, yeah, we'll just run on through. Before we start off, though, there is one little thing I want to show off. And don't worry, it's it's Guild Wars related. We're gonna. This was something someone showed me. Um, all I really have to go on for this is a screenshot from the Spud Discord. Someone found something hidden in the achievements. So, what we're going to do is go to the Andorea Waypoint point here in uh, in Ascalon. And I don't think this will take too long. This is very cool. This is story. This is lore related. It's funny. On the previous part, I was talking about a bunch about like, uh, you know, graphics and MMOs and, you know, the, the whole G-Shade thing. Instantly got like some snarky comments on the previous part saying, ah, WP always talks so long off topic. So <laughs> I'll try not to do that too long here today. We'll just rush on through. Just talk about Guild Wars. Am I right? It's okay, guys. I understand how you think. So, we we can go up through here, I think. I don't think I have to proc anything. Now, you might be wondering yourself, why are you in Ascalon? What has this got to do with anything? Well, I've talked a ton about it already. Apparently, there's an update. And I'm trying to look at the screenshot here to figure this out just right. We want to be to the left. Of the, is it just near the, the heart, maybe? There's an update. I doubt they would have changed the map's geometry. This is the heart, yeah, where you can do the flame effigy. That's fine. This doesn't look right as far as the map's concerned. I don't think so. I think we need to be further... It's really close to here. We want to be like... Is it, is it in the water? Do we go through the tunnel? Is there a, a hidden tunnel in the water down here? Is that the thing? Oh, maybe in this ruin? Oh, here you go, under this ruin. This isn't new, right? I'm sure this isn't new. I don't think I've ever been here, for what it's worth. This is not a map comp thing. I, there might be a guild trek. If this isn't new, there's probably a guild trek that takes you here. But it's not a guild trek I've ever gone to. Um, and I doubt there's any collections or any, you know, if there's a precursor legendary weapon collection or something that takes you here. I've, I've never done that either. Seriously, I've never been here. This is a weird area of Corteria. It's either that or it's totally new, but I don't think they would have just fully up because they have to like stream you a bunch of data and stuff, don't they, to actually fully update uh, an area? Let's put the music and stuff on. So I don't think it's that, but here, if we swim through, there's this mysterious book here now. And before I read the book, I'll just take the cat out of the bag. We are really near where the wizard's folly was in Guild Wars 1, okay? Like pre searing, the map of pre searing Ascalon. Was something like this, or maybe a bit smaller than that. That seems like a really small square, but as far as Guild Wars One's concerned, that's huge. Because you had like Fort Rannick, you had Ascalon City is here. You had a little bit. No, actually, it's probably a little bit more like this. Was pre searing You couldn't get all the way over to Rin, and it was a bit more south, I think. Okay, but you could come into these mountains, and this was the Wizard's Folly map here. And then you know you had like the foothills and Fort Rannick here. And then you had Beyond the Wall, right? It was it was something like this. This is the pre-searing map. You can obviously go to uh, that shaman's historical guide to Tyria to, to see it properly overlaid. Anyway, um, this is as close as you can get, I guess, in Guild Wars 2. I guess Arena... If this is if this is vanilla, this this corridor, and I'm, I, I suspect it probably is vanilla. If it's vanilla, I guess ArenaNet had always imagined that this was like the wizard's folly entrance or whatever but there was nothing explicitly telling the player base that i suppose i don't know i mean you gotta remember in vanilla there's all these interesting things like the bandit brisbane bridge right like hints that they had ideas for other places there's the the data mine thing for the delessio seaboard which i talked about in my pre-expansion videos you know that maybe this would be where we would go so i don't know um but here we can check this out and if the drakes stop spawning on top of me we have a book. Now, the book is new. The book is definitely new. And they can they can drop assets in that you interact with. 
no problem whatsoever. So, um, this is just with Secrets of the Obscure. Those who pledge to something more, may your journey never end. May those worthy of the title Wayfinder feel the warmth of these pages and be guided home. As you, the pages emit warmth. Place your hand on the page. Oh my god! Oh, I thought we were going to get a cutscene there. That was going to com completely blow my mind. How long has this been here? Find and activate the Azure's portal. Wait, there's a portal? Oh, it takes you to the Beacon of the Ages. Oh my god. Hold on, I I'm going to go through the portal, but I want to explore the rest of the corridor as well. Okay. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so I can go through and that takes me to Secrets of the Obscure? I they called it... I wonder how long this has been here. I wonder whether that was sneakily added during the, um... Like press months before Secrets of the Obscure came out. Because Guild Wars does stuff like that, you know? Like, um, it's kind of funny we see Mabon drifting around there. Uh, since the story's going to be about to be, be all about him. You know, Guild Wars does stuff like that. In Season 1, they had, like, the trees disappearing. And when there were less maps, and when the player base was more focused in one area, like, people would catch it. They would find stuff. Like, I think about Season 3, when um, an Ascended Ring... Rurik signet ring was dropping on this map and it didn't get fa found for like two years or something a year at least maybe two years it didn't get found for ages until like after the season was over so i wonder if arena net snuck that in there hoping to refresh reddit one day and see that people were you know on there talking about it and yet um it wasn't or maybe it did just come in with secrets of the obscure hey who knows or maybe i should mark it there a little bit so yeah, that's really cool. People showed that off in uh, the spud chat. I like the white flash effect. That's awesome. Okay, right. Let's go back up to the bastion of strength now. And head through. So yeah, I had some snarky comments on the previous part. One of them was... Someone was like, oh, this content's really bad. You're seeing story. They're referring to story they haven't seen yet. So, uh, and sorry to give them kind of a snotty voice, but I mean wasn't particularly pleasantly written but I think um, I don't really know what they're talking about there I guess something at the end of the meta or canonically the meta takes place after the main story like this meta 2 that we did on the previous part I, I guess canonically that's the very end of the expansion I have no way of knowing that though you know I've done the meta before I did it there like maybe twice before that's it you know I'm not sitting here grinding secrets the obscure between these videos I'm I'm trying to explore experience it as fresh as I can with you guys so you know but I think the fact that I did the meta here has no bearing at all on you know how many parts we've had or anything that would have happened anyway I always plan to do meta too before I finish the story but yeah so we'll see I don't know I mean because there were all those characters standing in a ring at the end there it's possible that maybe one of them referred to something that we're only about to learn in a minute I don't know obviously the really interesting thing was the Largos and some of you guys did point out actually and I I totally spaced on this uh, but when we were wandering around maybe in like part 10 or something and what when we first got to this map I think one of the first bastions we were on we found a Lagos you know they were chatting away and we walked over and they they proxed some dialogue so yeah the fact that there are Lagos here is not necessarily super new but that specific Lagos I don't know anyway all right we got a bit of dialogue and apparently it's muted so let's turn this on real quick like I can see you. You can. What? You must be getting closer to him. Uh, damn it! Oh, I spoke in live chat. Uh, N Master says I spoke to a Tengu that was referring to the end of the next chapter. That's so funny because it, nothing in my head. I, I still don't. I, we're all being vague. I guess we'll figure that out in a second. I don't know what they were talking about like that's like saying there was a spoiler when we spoke to that tengu but was there i mean it would have been pretty buried I, nothing fell off to me but was that because i've just played it already you know i've got pretty good track in my head of what we've seen in the series and what we haven't anyway yeah so we see paytha for the first time um you know i, I don't want to be a debbie downer constantly uh, i like the demons generally in this expansion unfortunately paytha to me just looks like a silvari and in fact, did we already talk about this? But the novelty uh, before um, the combat tonic that's come in with this uh, this expansion. Is this really just... No, it's not. It's down here somewhere. The, um, the combat tonic got updated the other day. And it's not 
the really cool looking monster anymore. It's Pather. I'll just click. Here we go. It's, so it's a Pather thing, which makes a lot more sense because to me, that's like a really edgy Silvari. That could almost be like a foul lane form, you know? It's just kind of a nightmare quality Silvari. It looks cool. Don't get me wrong. I think it's the kind of leafy skirty thing going on down low. It gives me the impression. But it's very tall as well. You know, one of the defining things about Silvari is they're kind of short. Right, um, slightly shorter than humans on average. Well, this is like norm sized or even bigger. But yeah, so we see Pather, and um, just talking a bit about Epark really loves this place or spoke about it like a kingdom. Also, have you noticed there's a lot of weird things about Pather that's going on? Pather's surprised to feel fear in that event, Pather's surprised that we can see them. There's kind of like this oddness about Pather, like. Pather doesn't fully understand its own powers either. Anyway, number seven, Mabon's Fate. Yeah, I think it's going to go Mabon's Fate, and then we do some rifts, and hopefully we'll have some good chat during that. And then it's number nine, and nine is the end, I think. And nine is the second strike. We've already seen one. That was Dagda at the observatory, and the other strike we'll see in a second. And, uh, and yeah, so. Hello, team. So we've located him. How bad? Mabon isn't well. I don't know if... Uh, he's... With us. Mabon's this way. What a great cast here as well. Frode, I feel like we haven't spoken to enough yet, you know. But Dagda's looking good. I like how they have the... Um, it's not Astral, is it? Isn't this the uh, set from... Season 4, Episode 1? This this sword, isn't it, right? The Stella? Or is Stella the Tier 2? I can't remember. Anyway, I've got that skin, and it's like star-based, and you can see it's like got... It feels characteristically a bit like the Observatory and so on. It's cool they put Gareth here, because Gareth's kind of a cool part of the expansion, but it's very, like, ancillary. You know, you see him a lot in the open world, and you see him off to the side, but here he is in a main mission again. And actually leading the charge. There he is. There they are, too. No! Cool little camera Out movement there. Forward! I like how Zodja armor of Earths as she charges in. It gives her a break bar. Okay, so we need to clear the Cryptus. This is probably going to feel a lot like uh, <laughs> clearing this Bastion in the open world events. Except maybe scaled a bit differently, so it'll be possibly slightly easier. I'm actually currently appearing offline because a tournament is going to proc at the moment, and I don't want people to start whispering me again, saying, hey, do you want to play the tournament? Do you want when I don't, I'm in PvE, so I will, I'll appear online again once the window's closed, and if you guys want to party up with me, and, you know, actually, we can five-man at the, the end of this, then that's super cool. I don't mind doing that at all. Also, let me know if uh, the game volume is at any point too loud. I think I have it set up that it never will be. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you guys had a good weekend. I, I kind of had a horrible weekend. Um, I, I don't know what I did. Have you guys ever had this, right? Where, at the end of the day, maybe you've been, like, really sedentary for a while, right? So, I can't remember if it was at the end of the last episode I did, or with something else. But maybe you're really sedentary or whatever, but you start moving around and you realize, like, it feels like you've got, like, a twinge in, the, in a muscle in your foot, like a bit of a twinge. And then you go to bed and you're like, well, whatever, it'll, it'll clear up. But you can kind of get the sense that it'll be worse the next day. I get that sometimes. And then, like, it's pretty painful to walk. And then and then it clears up, you know, because just like any kind of pulled muscle or whatever, it will sort itself out. I had that this weekend. Um, it ha it's happened maybe four or five times in my life. But, you know, like, I know you remember painful experiences quite well. Anyway, so I had that. Um, and it was really bad. Like... I went to bed thinking, oh yeah, it'll be fine, it'll probably clear up tomorrow, but it got worse. And then the next day, I've never had it like last two days in a row, but then it lasted like the whole weekend. It, like Does it started Friday, by Sunday I was in agony. Doja, where are you? It was so painful. I was actually taking ibuprofen just to like, hopefully, like it swelled up, swelled up so much. Um, and I was just trying to clear it up as best as I could. And today, finally, it started to feel a little bit better. But, like, I couldn't move. I was, like, hopping around. Like, it was that bad. Or, like, going up and down stairs, like, hobbling around like an old man. <laughs> it was agony. And I think it is just, like, a pinched nerve or something. Um, but I can't think what I was doing. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, like, running around or anything on that day. Maybe that was exactly why. Because I kind of think maybe it's if... If you have a really, like, sedentary day, maybe 
these things happen. It's called too much SPVP itis. I've actually really been easing off of the PvP the past two, three weeks. Um, I mostly just... If I get an invite to do a tournament, I'll do the tournament. I've played very, very little ranked. I found I did too many tournaments, and it's really nice when like people know how to rotate, or you actually have like a an idea of who's doing what. You know, because certain roles are filled. You have a support. You have one or two side nodes. Like you get get what people are going to do, and then you go back to ranked, and it's just insanity. You know, and there's just such a huge, there's such a tiny ranked population that the skill disparity in there is just it's insane. And if you're solo queuing, not duoing, it's just I just found it really unfun suddenly, like really, really unfun. Um, and I kind of got everything I want to get out of this meta anyway. I'm really looking forward to Tuesday, because uh, there's hopefully a balance patch. In fact, uh, I know people, especially in PvE, are really looking forward to this balance patch in the hopes that it's going to be really good. Um, I would have hoped that ArenaNet would already have had a preview out about it. In fact, today would have been a great day to have a preview. But uh, I don't think there is one, and that bodes kind of not well for me. It makes me think that it's probably not going to be a very big patch. Like, there's so many things to address in PvE. As far as, like, competitive stuff's concerned, uh, I don't think they're going to really get much in there. And they really do need to sort a lot of stuff out with the relics and things. It's just that constant feeling in Guild Wars of, like, feeling like various things are understaffed or undermanned or they can't get enough out or whatever in time. But we'll see what happens. We'll see. Maybe it'll be a really good balance patch. I would love an excuse. Like, Boots was in chat on the last part. I'd love an excuse to sit down and do a balance with Boots. I really would. I think it'd be super cool. But, you know, these aren't just Guild Wars specific issues. When I've been easing off the PvP, I've only really been in tournaments. The, the big MMO I'm playing a lot of at the moment is Final Fantasy XIV. Like, I'm doing so much of that goddamn game because I'm making that essentially their equi equivalent of a legendary weapon. And, uh, you know, I was on their Reddit this morning, and their Reddit's just like the Guild Wars Reddit. You know, there's a discussion, there's a post on there saying, oh, nobody can take... We need to learn how to deal with constructive criticism, guys. It's not toxic to not like the game. And then there's loads of responses of people saying, Oh, this subreddit's just for fan art. And just for casuals who just want to talk. It's just all conversations I've read a thousand times on the Guild Wars side. A thousand times. You know, the scale may be bigger for Final Fantasy at this point. But it's like, wow, man, like... It really feels exactly the same. It's a very different game with very different problems. Very different, like, release schedules and so on. I can't even adequately speak to a lot of it because I've been kind of a fair-weather player of that game, you know. I've not been... Like, Guild Wars, I know what it's like to sit and wait for the patch. In Final Fantasy, I just go off and play something else, right? Um, I can't even speak that accurately to it, but you can really tell. It just it feels like the same goddamn thing. I wonder if there's a game out there where people don't talk that way or act that way on their subreddits. The other game I've been playing a bit of, I think I've had like play four play sessions of now, a game that I really did not expect to like at all, but while I'm sitting there with my injured foot is what I spent most of my time playing this weekend. Um, it's a sci-fi game. A game that makes me desperately want to go back and finish my Stellaris mods. It makes me think about Stellaris constantly, okay. But it's not quite the same scale as Stellaris. It is, however, you get on spaceships, you explore planets. It's not Starfield, it's No Man's Sky. I hope I didn't talk about this in the previous part. I don't think I was playing it just yet. At that point, was I? Yeah, I've been playing No Man's Sky, and in the past I kind of looked at that game and thought, that looks crap, you know. You just wander around laser beaming. Do we just run? This is just going infinitely here. I, just, something clicked in my head, I was like, the game's given me too long to speak here. Usually I'm getting interrupted before now. I think we just run. Because our objective is to find out where they've gone. Uh, so yeah, I thought it looked crap, but oh my god. They were not kidding when they said there's been a lot of updates to that game. There's like pets that you can mount, and you can breed, and you can like get their eggs and stuff, and there's you know, cataloging all these different planets and the solar systems have like space stations with missions on them and different factions and piracy and you can trade starships once you get like millions of credits and I, I'm basically poor in the game so I can't do that right now. And then you can get like frigates and you can get fleets and you, there's base building and you can like make little towns with NPCs. It just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. It's crazy. And um, 
I, I feel I feel like with a game like that where it releases kind of crap and then they just keep throwing stuff on, that it would end up feeling like it's all tacked on and it's just all wobbly piled on together and feels shit. But it's all really seamlessly integrated and stuff. I genuinely think it's quite a good game and it's quite captivating. So here's my bon. Soldier. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. Too much no man's sky itis, I suppose. Soldier, get a hold of yourself. We need to fight. I'm glad I could block that. I wasn't sure if I could, but I figured I'd wing it. I should have used my elite there, probably. The world is downright cruel to anyone who gives a damn. He gave me a home when mine forgot about me. He saw me, me. Not just trophies and awards, me. So I love how Masar here is like the ultimate good guy of this expansion. By the way, this guy's got a cool name, Asthenes. Asthenes. I don't know if that's Greek again. So rend corruption. No away! Oh, I got an achievement apparently. That will be one of the new ones. You did not die in that place. You have a home. Defeat the boss without getting downed. I don't even know what the risk was of getting downed. Hey. I really Be want it. Taken by the flow. That's... I'll send word to the tower. Zizzle. Mm. Man, they get over the death pretty quick. I'm hoping if I don't walk over there, they won't speak. But Dagda's on a move in, and she might just trigger the next thing straight away. So we get the relic of Akeem here when we die. Well, when Mabon dies. So yeah, Mabon does not survive the expansion. He's dead. And that's why, you know, in the previous part where I was like... If you look at the, the way it's written when he just runs away, it kind of stings a bit. It's like, oh man, clearly they just want to get him off screen. Because the next time he's on screen, they're going to kill him. You know, so all these things where, oh, we can ask him about Janthir and we can ask him more about his previous life and that interesting thing in that journal about the thing that he wasn't sure if he should speak to Lazarus about or not, you know. It, it all, you, you, we don't know. I mean, maybe the arena net does have plans. It certainly feels like there's still fans. I think from Secrets of the Obscure, it feels like there's still fans of the Massar and they'll do things with the Massar, which I think is really cool. Um, but not na not right now. It's At the end of the day as well, this is, was never really seemed to be a Massar expansion and then it's ended up in a significant way because we've had this Massar character but now that he's he, he's out we kind of I guess we don't think about them too much anymore so it doesn't really surprise me that Mabon didn't survive he's like too cool he's too special he's too connected with the ancient races but hold that thought because Dagda's here and we are on a quest after all to find Isgaran a seer and seer um, Isgaran as a seer the seers check all those same boxes right as Mabon does so does that mean Isgaran is a goner does that mean we won't be able to hang and chill with Isgaran in the next couple of patches and so on well think about that and by the end of this episode that will hopefully be answered um but there's a few really cool things here. I'm very curious about this last thing that Mabon says. You did not die in that place. You have a home. Is he speaking to Zodja about the Blighting Pod? I think that's what I want more from the Zodja stuff than anything else. You know, they kind of, they get Felicia Day back and they say, oh, it's this big emotional journey for Zodja or whatever. She has all these big set pieces and moments where she's she's crying and she's hysterical and this and that, and, you know, and that's what a voice actress would want for their character. But I mean, and so Zodja's like really emotional here in this scene. But I feel like I want more about the Blighting Pod. I don't know. Maybe that's the little piece of the puzzle. Because there's something niggling me about Zodja in this expansion. I can't, can't quite put my finger on it. That feels unsatisfying. But if that is about the, the Blighting Pod. You didn't die in there. You have a home. Or are they talking about something much more obvious. And I'm just being an idiot because it happened recently. Or is this... Is this some, you know, disconnected thought in his death throes that doesn't really you know make any sense but it's speaking about something else is he talking about himself is he talking about the other Massart you know this whole thing of you have a home the Massart's home and all that kind of stuff is all really interesting so, but I don't know whether that's really what they're doing 
I'm probably being an idiot. It like, it, if you want to get what I mean, I mean, if you guys have seen Lost, it's like Juliet. Oh, I, no, I can't spoil anything. Anyway, at one point, Juliet talks about cappuccino. Okay. A very particular moment. She's talking about cappuccinos. All right. And I wonder if it's that kind of a thing, you know. Yeah, you guys will take about Zodger in the pod. I mean, that's m the immediate text that I get from it. So, yeah, let's just say it's that. And it's nice if it's about that because that's more on the on the blind pod, which I think scratches that itch, that thing I'm vaguely unsettled about. Also, I like this with Gaurath. Gaurath says, be taken by the flow. There's a lot more in this expansion about, like, the magics of Tyria flowing beneath, like, the life force of Tyria, like... We talk about tapping it and stuff. I just kind of like this because, you know, Galrath is a is a Crichton. Um, like a classic Crichton. And here we hear him saying this stuff. I mean, it would have changed over the next 260 years, I suppose. I guess he says be taken by the flow, more motivated by his status among the wizard's court than anything else. But yeah, I'll send word to the tower. What's the tower? Just the wizard's tower? just tell everyone because I was thinking for a second is it like the weird little towers we see all over the place you know and the fact he's got one dedicated to him and the people there need to know but I don't think so I think they just mean the wizard's tower and uh yeah so bye bye Mabon I don't know if you guys have got any thoughts about um Mabon's death feel free to drop them and I'll I'll I'll, I'll definitely talk about them as we go through uh I had a donation thank you Eduardo that's really nice of you five dollars hey WP you, you hope I'm doing well you're 23 minutes behind <laughs> So you're catching up. Yeah, no worries, man. I've got that setting on so people can watch at any pace they like. Um, all right, let's let's move on then. Uh, can I press F on anyone? See, Fro doesn't really speak here. How is she? Heartbroken. You should have seen them. When times were less severe. Her flame was ill-tended when she first arrived, barely visible. But he helped tend to that flame once again, gave her the tools that she needed to keep it lit. She reminds me so much of him. And pardon. There's Dagda being a bit more sensitive, by the way, because she was very, like, you know... <laughs> she got in our face a lot. But it goes to show, if you're an ally, what are you thinking, little light? Do you know how proud Maban was of you? How special you were to him? And then he died. But our memory of him didn't. Nor did everything he taught you. He took me in when the rest of the world forgot. I had so much more to learn from him. You will only continue to grow, Zoja. But you have to choose that path. Mabon saw a spark in you. As he saw the stars in me. Tend to that flame. Kindle it. Your future could be with us. <clears throat> with you? So we, I can now be a lot less cagey. That's that hug's really nice there. They're almost fading to black slightly too quickly in that cutscene. Need to sit. Because you can almost She'll miss be that. All right. She just needs to reflect. You should too. Maybe they I know you didn't know him for very long. But I think you can see what he meant to us. Especially her. Hmm. His callowness claims to the air. I feel the warmth of his breath collecting on your skin. Oh, I love this as well. I think that's such a cool way to Disgusting. end this instance. The dolt follows Abog without a thought. Um, Who are you talking about? Did Epoch send him simply to cause havoc for the lane of men? I have to be quiet in case the deck game keeps. 
keep speaking. Okay, can we speak now? I think we're alright, guys. Um, yeah, I love the I love this idea of having a really emotional scene, and then they kind of throw cold water on you, like with the creepy demon voice in your head again, like quite fast to snap you out of it. I really like that, and I think that that works quite well there. The music in the cutscenes really good as well. It's one of those things where, again, I feel like if Guild Wars had you know, that that really long quest quest chain style expansion, you know, like it felt like a really good meaty RPG with a lot of dialogue and so on. A moment like this would really gut me and it would really, really feel, but to me, I feel kind of, you know, weightless with it because, you know, as far as I know, I'm only just really hearing that Mabon and Zodja had a special connection and now she's that, you know, it's, I'm kind of not in the moment so to speak but I do really like the cutscene I think it's a, a cool little idea for, for where they wanted to go with it uh, but now we can be less cagey about something that's been pretty obvious I think this whole thing about Zodja has a spark a flame within her she's got some talent she's got some magical capacity is that nature is that nurture I don't really know because they talk about the Jotun with the stars and stuff which is you know so is it is it something ingrained within her anyway uh, something they want to cultivate basically what they're going to suggest to her is she should ascend so that is uh, Zodja's kind of conclusion in the main story here, this big question of should she ascend? Should she join them fully? Um, and there'll be a lot of conversation in this part about that. So yeah, um, and as for what Paith is talking about here, his callowness clings to the air. I feel the warmth of his breath collecting on your skin, disgusting. The dog follows Epoch without a thought. Did Epoch send him simply to cause havoc before the main event? I believe she's talking... And I think we've got his name already. She's talking about Ceres, who is the demon we, the, this expansion opened with. When we were in Naos and we saw that demon prowling around, the, the demon that looked a lot like Deimos, that's Ceres, and I'm pretty sure that that's who Paith is talking about. Um, but Liss isn't quite there yet, so I guess that's a very minor mystery. I'm not even sure why that is a mystery right now. Is it a mystery? Just not fully divulged. It will be in a second if it's not. So here we got uh, Zodja. Let's speak to her. Hey, I, uh, I need a bit. We'll talk later. Yeah, delivered really well. Um, this is obviously also where we saw Gaurath was paying his respects and was a little bit somber in tone earlier as well. So we get Dagda here. Thank you for standing with Zodja. I'm sure that battle will stay with her until she chooses to cross. Her future being with you. What did you mean by that? Here you go. Zoja has amazing magical ability. When she arrived, it was untested. She'd spent so long focusing on her technological studies that she neglected the well of power at her feet. But she also knows much of the modern marvels that many of us do not comprehend. She is special. You want her to join the wizard's court? That will be Zoja's choice. I think it's really important there that they point out it is a person's choice whether they join. You know, whether that means subsequent indoctrination and all that, whether they've been deceived or misled about what Ascension really is, it can still be kind of, like, gross, but it is people's choice to join. And, yeah, someone in chat just said there's a new achievement to sit with her. That's funny since she says she wants to be alone. <laughs> Look, if I'm going through some grief or some bad times and I say I want to be alone, that means I want to be alone. Right? <laughs> like, I'm watching um, The Office at the moment and there's this scene where one of the characters, Pam, is crying and, like, another guy that you wouldn't expect is, like, really comforting to her. He, like, he's going to offer his jacket and stuff and he's a bit awkward. And I, I just spent the whole time watching that scene thinking, man, ugh, if I was Pam, I would just want him to go away. I'd want a private moment. I don't... I wouldn't find comfort in like a near stranger or someone bordering on a person I don't even really like sort of intruding in a quiet moment where I'm tearful you know not that that's the relationship between Zodja and the commander here but yeah okay so um cool thank you for that guys we get another achievement that I would have missed otherwise yeah so with the Mabon dying thing uh what did I just read in chat you were you were um Yeah, so Derek there said, Sad part about Mabon's death was we didn't truly get to see him work with his Garen. It was a waste of a character and felt meaningless as a death. Like you said, he just pieced out, kind of. I do think having those scenes where they were interacting together would have been awesome. And we kind of denied that. It's interesting. I kind of respect ArenaNet for this because, you know, the big criticism with Lazarus 
is oh guys we're doing the massage is lazarus oh no wait it was balthazar the whole time so that's a gut punch and now that feels not very good oh but here is our lazarus his real there you go you get the massage his real lazarus oh wait but he's dead in a single patch in fact we only really see him for the briefest of little moments so then years later they're like okay let's do an expansion with a massage in it and again they just bold face look straight at you and say yeah we're gonna kill him straight away as well just like we did with lazarus like there's two ways you can take that. One is, okay, the devs understood the whole history here and understood how the community was feeling. Attention war. And they did Report it anyway. Look at this fucking meta dialogue. Jesus Christ. Am I wrong to get so aggravated by that? Um, they just, they do it anyway. And they know, f knowing full well they do it anyway. For that, I have quite a lot of respect for. But if they just, like, blunderingly did that, then I think, oh, that's not very good. So it's kind of funny, isn't it, that it's... I'm going to assume they knew, alright? This is such a good expansion in terms of knowing everywhere they've been and what they've done. Like, they knew, and they killed Mabonoff anyway, so I actually kind of like it. I kind of really respect the idea for that. So, Return to the Wizard's Tower. <clears throat> I, I genuinely have no memory of what is about to happen in the story. I know, I know what will ultimately happen, but this specific step... I, I got no memory of it. We may as well be blind right now. <laughs> I think we're just gonna go chat with Zodger and see what she thinks. Let's turn off the, uh, turn the dialogue back off, rather. You get them interacting in the collection. You see, okay, here's the thing. The post game, a lot of you guys are saying is really good and has a lot of cool things, so we will see. I'm especially interested in this idea that we, we're gonna learn the names of some seers. I think someone was hinting that the other day. Like, I literally said, oh, I'd love to know the actual names of the, the seers that, you know, maybe the one we spoke to in Guild Wars 1 and stuff. And I think we will get those details, which is pretty badass. And I'll be totally blind with that. I'm going to retitle the series um, after this part to uh, post-game. The end of Dragon's post-game stuff was really good. Wayfinder. Hello, Freud. I'm... I'm so sorry about Maban. He was kinder than we deserved. If we didn't have the cryptus at our door, I'd light a fire in our hearth. We'd sing, drink in his name. But instead we fight. The Astral Ward is holding the front line at the Bastion of Strength. When Maban made his final journey, the cryptus fell back. Huh. Got that going for us, at least. Hmm. The Bastion is presently secure, but when the next push begins... The air is different. They're plotting something. Then we'd better be at full strength when that happens. We haven't seen Iskaran since the Bastion of the Celestial was overrun. I assume he's near the Spire, if not inside. What he's up to could be good or bad. Wayfinder, I need you out on the Bastions. We could use a victory today. I'll make sure the cryptus feel our pain firsthand. Yeah, I think this is going to be rifts now. Where's Zoja? In the barracks, I think. Seems to be taking this the hardest. See, it's funny. We've been in Act Three, the final act, for a while now. Um, yeah. but too much wild magic in the air. Oh yeah, there was one of these we hadn't done yet, right? Was it this one? Uh, let's not get too distracted because there might be a lot of story to get through here. Um. It's funny, we've been in Act 3 for a while now, but narratively now feels like the start of Act 3 to me, you know? We've had a big loss, a big setback, but there's a calm before the storm kind of moment, everyone's calm, you know, the enemies have relaxed and they're regrouping, you get a sense that there'll be one big final conflict. You know, it feels like this is the start of Act 3 here. So number 8 now, Into the Obscure. In chat, Banjo says you have ascended. Do you know what, guys? I, I'm sh deeply ashamed to say this. I really can't remember the precise circumstances of what the commander has done in terms of ascension in Guild Wars 2. You know, the idea of ascending even in Guild Wars 1 was a fairly, like, vague process that we didn't really know what had happened. There was, like, a strict, clear idea of, like, the rights to undergo in the Crystal Desert to do it. And at the end, sure, yeah, we can... We can commune with the gods to see their avatars and go to the, you know, the the end game locations. You can see the Massat. Like, there were practical things that had happened. But, like, 
the deeper meaning behind it or what was really going on there, it really very little was explained or talked about. And in Guild Wars 2, I feel like there's been two or three different moments where it's been like, ooh, have you ascended? Wasn't it in one of the series? I think in season four, there's essentially a thing of ascension, right? But I remember even at that point, a bunch of people were sort of saying, wait, hold on, didn't we already ascend? Didn't we as People were getting confused whether we'd ascended in season two when you follow, you know, the rites in the library. You know, there's those instances. And I remember having to explain to people, no, no, that wasn't real ascension. You didn't actually do it. But nonetheless, that helped you with the divine magic to get through the door to the forgotten place at the end of season two. Like, and I'm deeply ashamed of this. I genuinely can't really remember, like, everything the commander's gone through or what meaning is really associated with any of it. I think the idea of ascending for the wizards is a different process. They've given it the same name. But I, I, I believe it to be a separate procedure. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, so yeah, Mabon's quarters. We'll never see him in his quarters. Get it together, Zoja. Get it together. But we will see Zoja. I'm one of the most awarded scholars in the colleges. I killed an elder dragon. And who wouldn't want to be a wizard, right? Not that I entirely understand this whole wizard thing. But I think you'd be a great one. Uh, did you hear all of that? I can pretend I didn't. <sighs> I'd be able to let go of all this... Grief, Mabon, Maguma, but I'd leave almost everything of merit I've ever achieved. But come on, I made a life-changing decision just after Mabon died. If it came from anyone but Dagda, it'd be emotional warfare. I used to be so mad at everyone. You have no idea. At me? At the world. You didn't do anything, but... When I left Ratasum, all I wanted was for you, or Logan, or Timmy to come looking for me. But I didn't want to be found. You guys were off saving the world, and I just wasn't ready for that again. I figured you were buried in research, and wanted to be left alone. After Mordramoth. I should have come. I know. I do. And I could have just as easily asked. I just wanted to feel... wanted, you know? I was embarrassed to ask. But you can't know what I need unless I tell you. What do you want to do? <sighs> I feel selfish for even humoring the idea. You're happy here. Radasum hasn't felt like a home in years. Another researcher, Pastor Prime, they stopped asking me to speak at the colleges. But here, they know me. Even without Mabon, this feels like home. Especially with you here. Then I'll support whatever you decide. Yeah? How is Timmy doing, anyway? Behaving? Absolutely not. But she's as bright as ever. And dating, if you can believe it. Oh, alchemy. Nothing stops the march of time, does it? I'll leave you to it. Frode needs me to... You know what? It's not important. Good luck, Zosha. I'm here, no matter what. I mean, really, the delivery of these lines is so good, right? It's really good. Uh, I think this scene plays out super well with playing a female Asura as well. You know, we're like sisters from Ratasum or whatever. Um, it would have been amazing if there was just an act ed added extra line in there specifically referring to that somehow. That would have been so good. Yeah, I, it's a good scene, isn't it? And you, I, it really gives me a lot to chew on in terms of like what Zodja might be thinking about and whether she'll actually go through with it. Um, that thing, uh, if it was anyone other than Dagda, that would have been emotional warfare. Like, that's a cool line. Um, in chat, Aaron says, you think there is a bit of meta commentary in there? You know, I was wondering that as well. Is there meta commentary here? I don't know, though, on this one. Knowing me, I'm completely wrong, and there is this time. But I don't know. I feel like this is just a really good character analysis and a, 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 a fun scene. Well, a sad scene, whatever. About, um, you know, where they are at the moment. So will Zodja ascend? 
I like this little thing where they start talking about timey as well, because when you realize the path we're on now, which is, it's kind of like the Mabon thing, if Zodja ascending means she gets mind wiped, it's, I don't know whether Arena will do this, but it's kind of a path for getting rid of her. And, you know, I can't help but think about real life stuff and does Felicia Day want to keep playing as Zodja for, you know, years and years and years to come? Do they have more big stories in the near future? All that kind of shit. Um, Zodja is ascending and kind of become, becoming not the same character, so she's off screen a lot more now. That's a way of getting rid of her that feels maybe a bit more organic than just killing her or whatever. Um, but if we're on that path, it's like, well, hold on, isn't there a lot to explore with Timey? And I think actually there is. I think, um, you know, the, the big thing at the heart of Guild Wars 2's story woes around season one was this thing of like, okay, we got this really cool cast. We wrote a novel about them. We've got the dungeon storyline. We've got the personal story, the early, the domestic stuff, all building these characters up. They're all there de destroying Zaitan. And now they're just fucking gone. And and we've got like a new cast. And what? why is Timey replacing Zodja? Why? What, what it, that's so weird, you know? And I feel like some of that was kind of organically done like with Ritlock obviously coming across both and Air had a bit of a story and so on but Timey Zodger they've barely had a scene together ever even though in the lore they're, they're, they're quite connected and there's a lot going on so if we're on the path now where Zodger's like leaving because she'll ascend or whatever I think it's really important to get a lot of Timey material in now because to do that is to address some of those wobbly bits from years ago that probably only fucking loser super nerds like me I actually still give a shit about or think about but uh you know I think that that's that's a good story to have as much about Zodja, uh timey stuff there and I think the way they'll probably end up doing this is we get a lot about we can get a bit of Zodja talking about timey here and then later we'll get timey talking about Zodja I'd like a scene or two of them together though for sure and that's a rare enough thing, me actively asking for lots of timey content. But I think she would work well. I, there's a lot of really interesting stuff to bounce off of when you put them both in a scene. It's not about like high mystery lore stuff, you know, like Mabon and his Garen type stuff. But I think it is really good and worthwhile doing. All right, so return to Amitas and do some rifts. I'm going to appear online now. Yeah, the tournament in rolls ended 10 minutes ago. And uh, if you guys want to join my squad, if you want to play with me... You're more than welcome to. I'm basically just going to hit the Heart of the Obscure and Tunnel Vision to a Rift and then hit the Heart of the Obscure and Tunnel Vision to a Rift. If that's actually what we have to do. I, but I think there's a Rift phase and then I think we go up on the ring. Warfinder, Rian asked for you to check in with him once you've spoken to Zoja. We talked. She's... Got a lot to think about. We'll let her grieve and reflect. Do I? In the meantime, while you're assisting Rian, the rest of the Astral Ward could use your help clearing the Bastions. And help raise morale. Many will be devastated when they hear the news. Give them hope. I can hear them. Who? Is Garen, sir. Do not let your focus slip. The ends are threading together. I love the phrasing of that, but I think it's essentially meaningless. I mean, saying we're coming to a conclusion, right? That's about it. Uh, in chat, <laughs> Superman says, Do you think Timey might die from her disease after Zodja is ascended or before? Uh, that's a very dark story. I don't think Guild Wars is in that place right now. I think I think Timey essentially has plot armor as for, for the next mini X back or two. I think ultimately it would be a good idea to have her disease mean something in a major and catastrophic way. And I do believe in getting the, the audience emotional and having sad beats, but I don't think they're really in that place right now. I also think, I can imagine any really daring or interesting story getting shot down in the writing room because, you know, they don't want it. Because I, I think what they want, I think the reason Zodja, um, Timey has like her mobility issue is I think what they want is to 
show the world hey look you can you can be awesome even if you're you know disabled in this way or that way look at how great time he is even though she's got this thing it doesn't define her and that's a lovely beautiful thing and you know that's a, a great virtue to signal to everyone and it's a really you know it, it, it's good but it but if that is really the the big motivation there i think it, it kills daring storytelling in its crib i don't think that they would then have oh no sorry time he died from it oh you know there's something really powerful and there's art there but i don't think they're in the business of making art when it comes to stuff like that i think they want to be on the right side of history blah 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 more than you know push any lines so I, I, I think Tommy pretty much has plot armor on those grounds. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but also, just in general, I think there's a lot of dark vibes in this expansion. And I, I don't think they'll do anything really daring or really shake the boat with the expansion, with as far as story content is concerned, for a while. Because they've just moved into like this new business model, this new storytelling model, and they don't want to tick people off. So there's just this other argument of, look, look a lot of people love Timey. A lot of people are big fans of Timey. And won't be like, oh my god, this is great drama, this is our Ozymandias episode kind of way. Just in our, oh, this is shit now kind of way. Like, oh, I I just lost a cool character. M meh kind of way, you know. And I don't think they would, that would be seriously rocking the boat to take risks. I mean, art requires you take risks, but I don't think they'll do that. And they probably shouldn't do that for a couple of mini... You know, let them find their feet, see what kind of stories work in this format, you know. Let's see how the next few patches go. Um, and then they'll go first. I've heard Further. of your feats since we last spoke. That's what spoke. I think. Wayfinder. A title for the ages, I think. And well deserved. As we approach the world spire, the cryptists grow more and more ravenous. But calculated. The bastions need you. Aren't you just seeping with adoration? Ah, I've yet to introduce you to Camilla. My smile. It's a pleasure, Wayfinder. Congratulations. Hands full? Very. But not without reward. I think I've discovered a way to help the heart home in on our unwanted visitors. When Rion mentioned he was meeting with you again, I asked to join. I could use someone in the field for more hands-on research. Well, the Wayfinder has been instrumental in aiding our hunters and the Astral Ward. Anything to give us the upper hand. Let's talk then. This could be mutually beneficial. Um, in chat as well, someone's saying uh, we're overdue having a main character die. I mean, you got to be really careful of that, though. You, you, I think that's that's a real trap to be like. I mean, obviously, pacing is a thing. Obviously, there are ebbs and flows to storytelling. Obviously, being somewhat predictable. <laughs> is worthwhile sometimes you know tropes are tropey for a reason so you, maybe we're overdue our codes but i wouldn't do it just because you feel obligated based on some weird sense of timing you know i i think that's that's that that's a terrible idea i think in all honesty when it comes to big character deaths there's many iterations of me in the past that have sat there and saying oh yeah we should do this we should kill jenna we should kill Trahan. Trahan did die you know we should kill this guy kill that guy blah blah you know timey i've said should die many times or whatever i think um i think now though especially with the mini x back format i'm not convinced like take that cutscene just now beautifully acted lovely music it's all really good but without more like depth i think and like character interactions and story this is so cool that's the tonic oh my god look he's wearing the tonic and he's called Epark. that is amazing dude that's a really freaky face as well holy shit that's scary wow uh i think um i i, I don't think killing a character is necessarily gonna bring me some amazing story moment just because you killed a character you know, even things that look small on paper can feel incredible as long as they're built up well enough. And the question is, do ArenaNet have the time with, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours worth of storytelling each x back or something? You know, let's look at Mabon. Mabon died here. This goes back a little bit to the discussion we had just before this expansion came out. What if Mabon survived all the way through this and Mabon survives this patch in a couple of weeks? the February patch, the June patch or whatever, all three patches, 
and Mabon dies at the end. So it's like we've known him for a year, and just in terms of actual raw quantity, he got a lot of lines, right? He got a lot to interact with him. We really got to bond with him. We found that connection. It takes time to find a real connection with an NPC, right? Um, so he gets the whole year, and then he dies. Then maybe we get something really real and something very sad out of that. And now maybe I really empathize with Zodra as she breaks down over it. Um, but ArenaNet gave him just like, you know, two thirds of the launch expansion. It, I'm not there, you know, that's not enough. So, yeah, I, d I don't think just kill a character off. There could be anyone. I'm not necessarily going to be connected to it. It's about how much time we can spend with those people, you know. Um, so, yeah, let's see what uh, Kamala says. I think this is all basically just fillery stuff here just to get us hunting a rift. Oh, and I have this muted because of the matter. I felt a yearning in it. It had curiosity for me, perhaps. As I it, I followed this pull and melded a spell, a charm of sorts, that would strengthen the connection between Wielder and the heart. I've taken to calling them motivations. They should enable the heart to attune to even stronger emotions hidden within you. I've got one for you here. You know, it's quite similar to, uh, I was reading some review, um, retrospective review of Batman v Superman. Because obviously there's all this stuff going on with DC, the big reboot, why did DC fail so hard, blah blah blah. And everyone knows why, it's because they rushed and so on. But like with Batman v Superman, what, uh, you know, sort of the, the Man of Steel sequel, if you will. Uh, there's like a well-known fact about that movie as to why was Henry Cavill felt so empty, why did he feel so underused, why did it feel so shit, you know, when they kill off Superman, which was a terrible idea anyway. But, uh, you know, why does it feel like there's not much going on? It's because there's literally not enough. Uh, but Superman has 40... This is a well-known fact about that movie. He's got 40 lines of dialogue. 40 lines in the entire mo movie. And it's just not enough. And, you know, when I was reading that, I was thinking about that with Guild Wars 2. You know, the, the Guild Wars 2, the, the writers have often said, oh, we're doing a blockbuster-style storytelling in our expansions. Yes, attention, 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 attention. Fucking yes, I get it. The meta's going on. Um, they're going on and on about these uh, um, blockbuster style storytelling but if that you know if that just puts you into this situation like you know where a lot of DC movies suffered when it comes to telling a big story building a big picture it's it's not the same you know uh, anyway um, so yeah basically we can hunt T2 rifts now that's the thing um, and that's what they want us to do. Use the motiva use the motivation to enhance the heart to locate a higher tier target. Uh, so I think I just scan. Oh no, I received a motivation in my inventory. Did I? Did I? I don't remember this. Uncommon crypt is motivation. Double click to track tier two rifts. This overrides other motivations. If you're already tracking. I don't remember this mechanic. Using this item will remove the effect. Heart of the Obscure Enhance. Oh my lord, okay. I can't... There it is. A rush of cold air. Turning to warmth, joy, and then anxiety. It's working. Follow where it guides you. Like, someone count up how many lines Mabon had in this expansion. I bet it's around 40. <laughs> I bet it's around there. Give or take 20. All right, which I know is like a 50% margin of error. Maybe that's not very instructive as a, a critique. <laughs> I think it is probably quite fair. All right, we're gonna get over there and quick. Uh, we had a donation and a quite big one as well. All right, yes, I'm the is ours, yes, woo. Oh, I'm gonna get kicked out of the map now, actually. Um. Hey WP, today's my birthday. So this is from Chris, Chris Wiseman. Thank you, dude. Uh, w hey WP, today's my birthday. Here's a 20 to say thanks for the years of content. Dude, that's really awesome. Your excitement and enthusiasm for Laura has elevated the X back in so many ways for you. Cheers. Thanks very much. That's really nice to hear. That's First of all, it's lovely to get a donation. Um, but second of all, it's just really nice to hear you guys with the nice positive comments because... Um, yeah, I was a, a bit worried about the series with people saying, oh, you know, you should just do them not live at all. It, it's better if they're not live and stuff. And in some ways, I agree. You know, when I bring, like, Tomb Raider and FF6 and stuff back, I think I just want them to be, like, non-live. I don't know. I, I'm in such a... I've got no confidence in any of the content I produce anymore. None. And it really means that I'm producing less. <sighs> so, I don't know. Uh, thank you very much. That's really nice of you, dude. Thank you. And happy birthday. Yeah, everybody's saying happy birthday in chat. That's good of you all. 
So there's a champion avatar of regret here. Again, if you guys want to join my squad, do these with me. You're more than welcome. We've got four minutes before this map closes. But in the new map, we can do whatever. Arena now has a bad habit of killing them and then telling us the story. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with that because they did that with Vlast as well, didn't they? Uh, the thing is, though, I kind of think that worked really well with Vlast. I know that's like classically one of those things people have complained about on mass. I'm kind of on arena net side with Vlast. So I think that that worked for me. But there's this other interesting thing where it's like Mabon kind of does get a lot of story. It's just in the side law, you know. It's like in these documents and journals and reports and things. And I wonder, does 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 receiving information about our characters in that way allow me to form an emotional connection that will pay off when some tragedy arises with them? I don't know whether it does, right? So, like, Waiting Sorrow is a really good example here. Waiting Sorrow is kind of in this expansion a lot, right? Just like how Joko was kind of in Path of Fire a lot, right? There's a huge amount of references to Joko, and a lot built around Joko. It's just he himself is not there. Waiting Sorrow is the same. So, let's say Waiting Sorrow comes back in one of these later patches, and then let's say Waiting Sorrow is going to die. I need to change my build. This is too much damage. I don't know whether it's all the, all the torment or what, but we'll see. Um, so so let's say Waiting Sorrow comes in and dies. Am I going to... Is that going to rock me? Or is it going to be like, oh, okay, hi. I've heard a lot about you. You know, it's so, one of those things. That was overwhelming. But also... Exhilarating. The heart is a peculiar device, but I thank whatever spirit you bend to that you've got it in your pocket. If you ever want more, come see me. I've crafted some even more potent than what I gave you. Hunt swiftly, and with empathy. I don't really know how deeply I should look into this whole thing about the emotions of the artifact and what exactly is going on there. Uh, someone says if I do a T3 instead of a T2, I'll get an achievement. Will I now? That's interesting. Um, I kind of don't want to do the next one. I kind of just want to leave the map. Because we're not really going to have time, are we? That's a T1 over there. Mind you, T1s can get done pretty quick, so let's see. You have to invest time and share events and memories to form an attachment, but maybe it's just you, but death does not mean much after Aureen. Air, Snaff, and anything. Yeah, this is, that's a good question. What character death impacted you guys the most in this game? All time, all history. For me, I think... It's Tibble or Traherne. Traherne was really good. We spent a good amount of time with Traherne. He wasn't particularly liked by the community, but, you know, I kind of always looked past that. I sort of saw it's because of the structure of the person, personal story. It's because they kill off your mentor and then immediately give you Traherne, right? And Traherne is just... He's the symptom. He's not the cause. It's the way that they structured the personal story and, like, it feels tacky or whatever, but... You know, I always liked Traherne. I really did. But the other thing about Traherne was he's such, like, a, a sad character. And he's such a, like, a promising character. And he's such a good character. That when someone like that dies, like, I'm, it really it gets to me. Like, on... It's something about just the way he is or was serves his death a lot more for me. There we go. That's annoying, isn't it? Right as we try to close it, we get kicked out of the map. Fun game. Okay, we get a bit of peace and quiet now, though, so that's good, because we're in a new map. Um, and then uh, I think Tibble is on my list. Tibble's a really interesting, like, archetype. I think a really good type to kill off for arena net, because, you know, when you have limited screen time, like the Menace did, Siren, Fogel, and Tibble, I only say Tibble of the three. They all basically have the screen t same screen time. They're all essentially serving the same function in the story, you know. One of them is a super old mentor type character, one of them is a naive explorer just like you, and one of them is this grizzled old guy. I think, but comic relief. I think it's that comic relief. Tibble doesn't get much time, but he he's so big when he's on screen because he's so charismatic. He's so full of personality and life and fun. You can connect with him so quickly, right? 
it's not easy actually to connect with Forgle. I've I've got like this fan fiction thing of like if I were to do a a, a, a core. Okay, I talk often about like core work in the game, but like uh, like a fan fiction the idea of like redoing the personal story, which is something I don't believe they'll ever have time for, right? Or money for, or, or incentive for. But if they did that, like I've always thought that you don't kill all three mentors at the same time. They have their own different moments that are more natural and fitting to their characters when they should die. I think Forgal has to die last. Forgal maybe even survives the personal story and dies in season one or something, because Forgal is. It takes time to get to know and really like a Forgal. But a Tibble, you get to know straight away. And so then when he dies at Claw Island, like, there's a big impact there. Um, Siren's kind of the middle ground, I suppose. And of course, I'm probably biased and influenced a little bit by the fact that I played uh, Order of Whispers first. I say a little bit, probably a lot, actually. But that's the way I see it with the, the Tibble thing. There's also just something about, like... Those mentor deaths, they felt personal, you know, because it was still in the throes of the personal story, the idea that actual individual choices mattered. This was your friend because of the order that you picked. And especially for a player who hasn't really analysed the structure of, the, of how they, they implemented all that earlier content, and you're just going through, it might feel like that was a really intimate part of your character, that you were with Forgor, or you were with Siren, and then they die. You get a big impact out of that. I don't think... You know, when you look at a later character death, like Air or Mabon or whatever, that whole facet of it's lost, you know? Air's an interesting one. I think Air is, honest to God, the only time ever in Guild Wars 2 they've gone for a shock death. Where, you know, the idea was to up the stakes and the drama and the adrenaline of the jungle adventure because holy fuck, Air just died here at the start. Finder. <laughs> While we search for Isgarin, I have a hunch that I'd like you to follow. The Bastion of the Obscure. I can hear whispers. N not Cryptis, not Isgarin. A pole? I don't think it's malevolent, but I think it's looking for you. Man, I don't remember this either. Well, there you go. That's the rift section done. Can I just point out, that took us, what, five minutes? Tops? I mean, that was very... I didn't even get off of one rant. <laughs> okay. And it's done. That was worthy of a negative review on Steam, though. Remember? That's what someone's on the rifts. People can finish the rifts before I get to them. That was one of the... Do you get what I mean? It's like, what the hell, man? Like... All right. Also, we train a master here. So our final flight training, what's this? Your flying mounts now gain endurance from updrafts and ley lines. Do they now? Interesting. That's okay. I do think this is good. It's nice to have a master tree with lots on it. How many times can I say it? So now we're onto the Astral Ward. Now, before this series started, I did already get this. The Astral Amenities, which is just get rest XP at the Wizard's Tower. That's it. So don't worry. It was two points. It took a second to get. So now we're onto Astral Craft. Gain access to purchasing Astral Ward armor and recipes to craft uncommon cryptis motivations for use in rift hunting. I've never done any of that. I don't know how any of that works. I'm sure that will be in the post-game series. I think getting the Astral Ward armor is a requirement to start the whole obsidian armor thing as well. Um, so yeah. And we're moving on up. It's interesting. I only have four mastery points here. And we need uh, 12 to finish all of this. So... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm eight behind here. Eight mastery points. We'll have to have a look at those. That'll be post-game, though. All right, so meet your allies at the Bastion of the Obscure. I can't remember this. What's this thing at the Bastion of the Obscure that wants to speak to me? Is it possible that there's this instance and then another rift section and then it's the end? Is that why it's slightly longer than I'm, I'm remembering or anticipating? But we'll see. Yeah, I, Killing's Air, uh, that felt like that was a shock. And I don't think they're really looking to do that again. You know, they, I, I kind of do agree with Killing Air in that Act 1 of Heart of Thorns, though. I think it's a good idea. She had a little bit of time in Season 2. You know, she obviously had all that screen time as well during um, the personal story. Kind of missing in Season 1. But so players were just connected enough with her. If Heart of Thorns had been big enough to support a proper Nightmare Court section in its story... 
I think that would have worked really well because where does our, our anger go? Where does the resolution to Air's death end up finding itself? Well, with the Foul Lane stuff, because Foul Lane was the one that did it, right? Uh, essentially. Um, so, you know, if Foul Lane had paid off well, I think it all would have worked. I think it could have been a really beautiful story. I think, like, a, if you wrote a novel about Heart of Thorns and the emphasis was in the right areas, it would have been so, so good, because when you end up with this huge conflict with Foul Lane, that's really juicy when you look at Kaith, because remember, we don't really know whether we trust Kaith in the expansion yet, and that th this thing is going to come to the point of us actually fighting Foul Lane, killing Foul Lane even, and we've got Kaith with our side, it's just, there's, a really, there's some really good scenes in there, uh, but it all kind of fell flat, you know. So we go, into the obscure. You wonder if Paith is a reused asset from a scrap Nightmare Court? I don't think that's true. Yeah, there's a bit of reuse in this. I don't think that's true. I think, come on, they did very well with all the demons and stuff in this. So, Urchik, hello, what's going on? Wayfinder, uh, Zizzle called on Urchik and Glade to assist you in the Bastion of the Obscure. I'm not sure what we're even looking for. Oh, w what does Glade mean by that? Clade can sense something. She's not sure what, but... She thinks it's Mabon. I don't know what it is, but I trust her always. Why don't I remember any of this? Let's see what we can find. I mean, this was a couple of weeks ago. Why don't I remember this? I don't know what's about to happen here, guys. I have no fucking clue. I got no clue. All right, in we go. Ooh, spooky. Your favorite death was that Prime Orders? Wow, that's worthy of a ban. Empty. No astral ward. Only the smells of fighting and fear. I think there's a problem with Sue too, which is the same problem as Drizzlewood, where they're talking to me as though there's some massive epic war and conflict going on, and I just don't... I'm not there. I don't believe in it. I don't know. Is it because there's not enough NPCs on the screen? Or something? I just... I mean, yeah, I guess it looks like there's been a battle. I mean, there's rubble around and scorch marks and bodies and things. And we know that there's events popping up all over the place. I just can't get there for some reason. Oh, I do remember this. We were fucking about with this for ages. Okay, because there's this... I don't know. Do you guys in chat know this? All right, there's that pile of riches up there. But you tried to get to it and you can't climb up. Now, Kerry had this amazing idea. I swear she's a genius, right? She stood on this, jumped, jade-botted... Okay, and now you slowly, slowly, you've got to land perfectly on top. And if I get it right, ah, oh, ah, oh, so close. Apparently you can get close enough that you can press F, but when we pressed F we couldn't figure it out, so I don't know. I don't think you're meant to be able to get up there. Oh god, Gabu. Man, I need to remember what the hell the Gabu story was. Let's see over here. There's the brown cow. Okay, this is like the confused, distorted brown cow that was popping up on all those different maps. <laughs> it was a really nice little reference there. I'm pretty sure that's what they're referencing. And again, another part of Secrets of the Obscure, like, clearly knowing the lore very well. A bunch of rats around a throne with another rat on top. I can't really see it, to be honest. It's too dark, but I think there is a rat up there. Yeah, you can actually see he's wobbling around ever so slightly. Uh, so there's rats worshipping the rat throne. Man, this is obviously not... This is just a bit of a joke, but i got to tell you guys, where would rats be really fun to see? I am pretty much 100% sure what I want, and that I know what I want the next mini X pack to be. I want a Depths of Tyria mini X pack. Fuck the underwater stuff and all that for now. Fuck the Tengu... Just ignore, I don't know, maybe I'm doing a, being an idiot here because um, I'm talking about features. But just in terms of places to go, I really want a Depths of Tyrion mini X. I think it could work so well. And think about it, you have a single map, right? But you theme it in such a way that it's like little pockets all over, you know? I don't know, figure it out. Figure the world map thing out with that, right? But that'll be so good. You just go all over the place and they can have one of the remaining bloodstones. I think that the end of this story, right, should end up being like, oh shit, we gotta find the other bloodstones, by the way. Where are they? And they'll be like, in the depths of Tyria. Dun dun dun. And then, you know, we go down, right? Be so good. And we find 
older sewer down there and things. They could do a really good sense of scale and spectacle and fun stuff with that. Glades found something. Quickly, uh, quickly. And then after that, we go to like, I don't know, like this island. And then after that, we go underwater. And then after that, I don't know. Oh, tragedy. Scrape hates to see so many good friends lost. Hates it. Honestly, I'm feeling so good about it Guild Wars lately. Easier. I know. I'm feeling. Arctic doesn't smell anything besides death, Glade. Let's continue the search. I'm feeling so good about Guild Wars because whenever I have any like slight misgivings or like, oh, was that really up to my standard? Do I like this? Do I like? If ever I feel a little bit iffy about anything, I'm like, fuck me. There's another X pack next year. You know, it feels so good. It really does. Very like. And obviously, time will tell how great these are. But um... Cryptus. Oh, is the commander learning to read Gladium's gestures? You don't have to get hysterical and panicky about every little bit of Guild Wars, you know. Not anymore, because we have, like, a roadmap. We have an idea of things that are coming. We have assurance from the studio that they care about the game, that they're not going to supplant it with another one, all that kind of stuff, right? There's, there's, there's no reason to be panicky or hysterical about, uh, hysterical about Guild Wars anymore. Like, on any level. I mean, as a veteran, I can see that. I think if you're new, then, you know, you're probably going to panic about balance and shit like that, but... That's not to say there aren't constructive things to say about the game, also. But I do, I feel more secure with the game, you know? I feel more comfortable with the game, just pure, based purely on that. Should have happened years ago. If they'd landed on this, I think I said this in a previous part, if they landed on this right after the Ice, Ice Bridge Saga, it would have just been the best. Scrit recognizes this. It's one of the housings that Maban used for his most valued artifacts. But no artifact. Do you think the Cryptus got to it? Mabon had an artifact, did he? No, this way. Glade says it's nearby. Uh, I don't remember this. What's this, what's this artifact? You just wish they wouldn't drop things like they had in raids or dungeons or over the things they, they had then abandoned. I think that's totally unfair. They need to be able to put in a storyline and then come back to it later. You know, like the Desmina thing, right? That's totally cool, and that's totally fine. It's a story ongoing, and they'll pick it up with she an expansion at some point. There's nothing her. wrong with that. And the game needs that. You. To not to not do that is to advocate for a game where there's just one fucking little idea, one thread, one slim little thing that matters, ever. And you don't have, like, a fictional universe anymore. You don't have a fictional world. You don't have a thriving, interesting place. You have just an empty Disneyland backdrop for that one little story you want to do. And I think that's that's nonsense. You know, they should have multiple threads and they can't do them all at once. And that's fine. That's healthy storytelling in an MMO to me. Um, I have no problems with them in that term, in that, that regard. Like, I think Se Secrets of the Obscure has opened a couple of doors, creaked open a couple of doors, maybe about the Scepter of Awe, maybe about Livia, whatever, right? And maybe about the Seers. And they, they'll just st stay there like that, just crept open for like a few mini x packs now i think that's the other good thing you know for all the issues with can they really tell a good story in a mini x pack can they really do it maybe they can't that fucking sucks right maybe they can't we'll see time will tell but even if the answer is maybe they can't we'll get through the we'll, we'll start opening those doors much more rapidly than we ever have in the past because there's one every year right that's kind of what i mean so special artifact Oh, here we go. This is Garin. This is our first appearance of him, by the way. Why did you stop fighting? It's not worth it. Killing you. Amasa, without bloodlust, how humble you are. I'm honest. I don't blame you for hating me. I don't blame your fear. My kindness killed for less. I am ashamed. I remember that now. <laughs> That's right. I like the way she said that. Yeah, that's so good, right? Um, that's the, their conversation at the end of their fight. They didn't get to do a big cutscene of the Massar and the Seer having a battle. Like, I know we're all imagining in our heads and would have been awesome. But no, no, no. They, they give us at least a conversation immediately after how these two became friends. So hold on. Mabon's artifact is just like... 
one of his only memories before his ascension. His memory of how he met his Garen. And that's a huge moment. That's really cool. I remember that scene. I guess I just forgot everything about leading up to it. Get a grand finale there. Are you okay, Commander? I'm fine, but I heard Maban. Isgarin was... I don't know what it means. They were fighting. Who was fighting? Maban and Isgarin. Maban sounded different. Maybe he hadn't ascended yet? I'm not sure. Urchik has heard of stranger things in the Bastion of the Obscure. Gladenskrit will return to Zizzle. Let him know what we discovered. All right. I'm going to rest for a moment. There you go. That almost feels like a little side story, really. That that feels like. Curious to see what a pinch of cryptic possession has down to his mind. A pinch of possession. I don't think I'm looking forward to it. All these years. Watching you fumble your way through things is exciting. But I should at least prepare the meat for slaughter. Not worried, are you? Only for myself, I'd be missing out on the feast of the decade, should my brother put you down. Your brother? Oh, Sarah's never knew how to play nicely. I worry that all he'll leave behind are blood and scraps of your flesh. <laughs> Seems like a detail you could have shared sooner. So you go. What difference would that have made? Other than to elicit a little more fear? Cyrus is no avatar. But he is terrified in his own special way. He's circled you this whole time, watching, waiting. As soon as his task is complete, you'll be next. And what is that task? You're on the right path. Don't fret. I think all these scenes with Pather here would have worked. I think if the expansion was slightly different. You know, we've been fighting the demons the whole time, just slaughtering them. Like, anything that comes out of Rift. Any meta we've done, we're just killing the demons. They're, they're not really scary to me anymore. I think if the expansion was slightly different, where there was a different conflict happening here on Tyria. So it's the same story, but maybe they're mercenaries or some shit that we're fighting here. I know that sounds kind of lame, but that's the point. Like, the stuff we're just going to handily destroy all the time. Yeah, have them just be mercs. But, so then when a scene like this prox, it's like, oh, by the way, you're going to be fighting a demon in a second. Like, holy, like, I'd be like, oh, my God, that's really scary. That's really captivating. That's really interesting. But right now, we've already fought so many high-ranking demons and things. It kind of feels a bit winded. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't know. This this uh, instance felt almost like it was going to be a meta event on the map, doesn't it? Right, like, this was a really juicy extra event with some cool Mabon backstory. So let's just put it in the main story. <laughs> that's kind of how it feels. Um... <coughs> But yeah, so we're coming up to conflict with Ceres, who's Pather's brother. There's a thing going on with Pather here where we're like, oh, do we trust them? Is Pather good? Is Pather bad? What's happening? That is really spoiled on a second playthrough when I know the answer to that question, which we'll deal with soon. Like the question of is Pather really good or bad? Um, well, I know to an extent the answer to that question. All right, let's keep going. There was also a really cool message in chat I wanted to read. Uh, you may, oh, this is not what I was going to read, but a cool question anyway. You've mentioned previously that you played WoW Classic when it released back in 2019. Did I consider doing a video on it? I think I did. I think I did Guild Wars 1 versus World of Warcraft. Um, and it was a really fun video. And I did it that way because they, they're they the contemporaries. Commander, it's, it's time. We know where Iskarin is. I I'm with you. 
the thing that happened with me with WoW Classic is um, what you got to understand is Guild Wars One was the counter jerk game. You know, Guild Wars One we was. Uh, let's talk in a minute. You're calling me that now. What should I call you? You're no commander to me. I like the wizards and their sins. Everything I've gathered about him, I'm hoping it would take more than a cryptus to bring Isgaran down. I'm more worried for you. I love that line. Just be cautious and hold something warm at the back of your mind. I don't quite know how to articulate why I like it so much, but this thing of like, you know, the game's always wanking you off. It's always like, oh, look at how good you are. Oh, you're amazing. Oh my God, look at how good you are. You, look, you're the commander. Oh my God, you're so good. And it's really nice to like, you know, the stakes here is we're on a rescue mission to, to, to save Isgaran. So it would be sensible to be like, oh yeah, yeah, he's a, he's under risk. Go, go, you're, you're the amazing commander, go fight him. But to turn that on his head and be like, oh, no, we're more worried about you than him. It it does two things at once. It makes the demons feel really dangerous because they th they're a threat to the commander who's usually being wanked off. And second, it makes Isgaran look really good because like they're not even worried about him too much. And the risk of a line like that is now you've undermined the stakes of the rescue mission. Why are we on a rescue mission if they're not even worried? You know, you can get stuck on that and really you know, and you can ruin the line. But I think just pushing through that that's such a good line. Hold something warm at the back of your mind. Remember what we learned in Giala Delve, happy thoughts means you're okay, right? Or well, it's consistent, we're going on with it. Friendship is magic and all that, so remember all the happy times we've had. Okay, so yeah, and this is it, stage nine, this is the end of the expansion. Right, yeah, with the WoW Classic thing, what you got to remember is Guild Wars 1 is like the counter-jerk game. It was made by incredibly intelligent people who had already spent a bunch of time in classic MMO development. And they understood the rat race, and they understood gear gr the the downsides of the WoW model, right? And of EverQuest, and what was kind of lame about like partying up, and what was lame about getting gear, and what was lame about playing MMOs when you're a functioning adult with a job and a life and stuff, right? And and they made Guild Wars to react to all of that stuff, so, and that was where I came in with that game, and I played it because it didn't have a sub fee, which was one of the parts of the counter jerk, right? But um. I never got to just experience what's great about what Blizzard was doing, what's great about Gear Grind, and what's great, and that's, that's, all, that's blasphemous to say to Guild Wars players. But there are really beautiful and awesome things about that classic MMO design. And when I played WoW Classic, I really got to breathe that in. I got to enjoy that and love that, and have a really, a real sense of like a virtual world that didn't feel as much. Guild Wars has always felt like software with all of its quality of life baked in everywhere. But WoW Classic felt like, holy shit, this is a virtual world with people and things happening and, like, there's no loading screens and who, who I am and my place in this world really feels meaningful in some way. And, you know, I enjoyed the grind and I enjoyed so much of that game. And I did a video comparing the two, Guild Wars 1 to WoW Classic. I had a lot of fun for, for my time with it. Of course, I didn't play it for years and years and years, so I'm not saying it's a perfect game. I played it for a couple of months and stopped. <laughs> Which, you know, maybe means it's a failure of an MMO by some standards. Anyway, there was another thing in chat, but we've moved on way too much now and the comments have gone on too far, so... Here we go. Um... No, I'm gonna scroll up. Where was it? Oh, no, I'm not. It's too much to scroll. It's too much to scroll. Okay, so, uh, gather with our allies. Get a bit of emotional whiplash here. Now we're in an action moment. Oh, Skrit is so glad to see the commander. The Wayfinder. Urgic means. <laughs> uh, uh, apologies. Skrit is scared. 
that thing appeared in the sky and... Oh, Glade. Urchik doesn't know what Skrit would do without you. You'd be just fine if something happened to Skrit, but who, Urchik? <laughs> Skrit doesn't want to know life without Gladium. It's very sappy. Uh, in chat, someone says uh, that damn Quaggan always interrupting. Yeah, dude, right? Like, do you guys get what I mean with the Quaggan thing now? I love Pater's voice. I think it works well, but only in small quantities. And I think around now in the expansion, it's like, ugh, we're going to get a lot more Pater <laughs> coming up as well. It's just slightly too slow. That's that's all it for me. I thought our days of adventuring were done. I've quite settled on the idea of watching the world from the tower. You? Glad to do management work? You've changed since Radosum. I never said I don't appreciate a good fight. So long as it's a good one. Well, if not good, this will certainly be exciting. So what is the thing in the sky? Are they referring to Norris from the map? Perhaps we'll meet during more polite weather, Wayfinder. Do I long for the days where Isgaran's greatest fear was Dagda's cooking? As much as I'd like to jest. I know. Let's think on the brighter side of things, just for a moment. Yes, Bradley. Bradley says it worked better when she was a mysterious spooky voice. The more she becomes a person, or an ally if that, it becomes goofy. Yeah, in fact, just now in this episode, when we see her for the first time, like we saw that visage of her, you know, maybe that moment, something should click with her voice as well, and we get kind of a... I don't know. It's all very difficult to anticipate that kind of stuff, though. Wayfinder. Zoja. I like that. Kurt, greeting. When the world was still run by nature and beasts. Sizzle, do you still sense him inside? I do. I can hear the... Scraping of claws, movement, echoes, cold, crudis. That line is crazy, by the way. Then we better hurry. And is Garin himself? There he is. Your miry companions is always. What do you mean? Say something, Wayfinder. Well, nothing. I thought I heard something. In my Are you okay? This thing about the veil constantly. I'm fine. Yes, yes, okay. I, in my uh, little world building MMO thing, I've always had this place that's kind of like. Like different areas in my thing feel like different vibes of fantasy. So, like, there's Disney esque, fa Disney -esque fantasy, and there's like. Uh, so I've got like a Tolkien-esque kind of area, you know, and kind of the areas of, you know, Gondor that have fallen for years and years and years. And I always called it the Grey Vale, like this massive continental region filled with fallen nations that are like essentially collapsed now. And it feels weird to travel around there. And now they keep talking about the Vale in Guild Wars and it just keeps making me think about that. But I love the idea here. I don't think this is going to happen in this instance, that we get to the top of the world spire and like a giant rift appears and like... The world almost warps into looking like Naos for a moment. I think that would be amazing. That would be so cool. But that might just be FF14 in my head, because quite often when you're in a trial or something, the entire background changes to a new area. You know, you'll be in a forest one second, and then in another, you're in a river or some shit. Anyway, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah, this is insane as well. This comment here from um, Dagda. Is Garin built the world spire when the world was still run by nature and beasts? So, chalk that up for a whole timeline thing. So far, we've been, what, dealing with about 400 years before the arrival of the gods? I think those are some of the earliest dates. Now, we're hearing about... I mean, I kind of hate this line. Because it's to suggest that this... I always like the idea of Tyria as a setting where it's like, okay, we've got the Asura, the Silvari, the Norn, the Char. They're, they're nowadays. Previously, 10,000 years ago, there were there were different apex civilizations. There were the Jotun, and the Dwarves, and the Massar, and the Seers. 
and previous to them, 10,000 years before that, was a different Elder Dragon cycle, and there would have been other civilizations there. We've never heard about them, but they would have been there, because Tyria is this amazing deep con world that's got loads of stuff going on. And then before them, there would have been another Elder Dragon cycle. Countless cycles, right? And there would have been other civilizations there, maybe the earliest dwarves at that point, but they were nothing at that point. And then before then, and then before then. And I would like to believe in all those details. I'd like to believe in the Tyria is this big place. But when you hear a line like this, that is Garan built it, it's like that end of Dragon's Lore about, you know, Su Wan watching over the world and that there might have been barely any cycles and stuff. Suddenly, this suggests that, like, the Seers were some of the first creatures ever here of intelligence, right? When the world was still run by nature and beasts. I mean, there's always a chance that Dagda's wrong when she says this, but I think this is one of those things where you have to assume there's some authority behind this line. And now it's Trunk Tyria. It's like it's too small. I kind of don't like that line for that. I was happy with Sutu when all this, the lore was like within that 400 years before the gods kind of idea. But now they're suggesting, oh, this was one of the first things ever built on Tyria, and it was built by Isgaran, who's still alive, by the way. You know how, how we've shrunk a lot. Does that make sense? Anyway, to not whine on and on and on, let's keep going. Action music this whole time, yet we haven't had a fight. So this is pretty cool. Maybe we could have done this before the meta because this is a nice introduction to the rings and so on. By the way, someone said in the okay, comments fine. that there is an event chain oh, up sure. here that we can do. And it starts one of the post-game collections, which is quite cool. I think when it comes to post-game, what I'm going to start with is things at the Wizard's Tower. Do they seem... Stronger? They've been eating well. We're down at Wizard. Don't let them get an edge. I agree with our little light. Move forward with shields high. It's interesting hearing Zodja being called the little light and talking about her flame and her spark constantly. More of them! So get a new wave. Just trying to find the best way to ball them up at the moment, actually. Maybe I could run Earth Shield. This is pretty good, though. Oh, okay, so he's coming. We need to th think of something we're fond of, guys. Do we recount a memory of when Aureen was young? Oh, that's a fond memory to me, you know, playing with Aureen in Tarir. You get that item, you know, to a turn pack. You can throw the ball and stuff. Recount a memory of good times with friends. That's pretty generic. Recount a memory of victory and glory. When I hear glory and victory like that, that just gives me an image of like the pact standing victorious sailing over the ruins of Arar having just smote Zaitan or something a tattered flag flaps in a, in, a, in a light breeze you know or that image that very specific image at the end of the personal story where everyone's standing on a rock it's you and Destiny's Edge looking out at Fort Trinity with the fireworks and you could drink a tonic and make it look really funny uh, recount a memory of gathering with everyone at Arborstone <laughs> yeah that was good wasn't it Someone tell me an interesting fact about Ayumi, right? Ooh, those characters. Or recount a memory of time with Zoja. Ah, oh, let's do Zoja. I mean, that's probably they're probably when Aurene is young is the one I would pick here mostly, but we'll do Zoja. Seeing Zoja after all this time. Seeing her happy, healthy. She still has a scowl. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be funny if there was a possibility Commander, of- Commander! Are you okay? Zoja, I promise I'll explain. But now is not the time. This is weird. Is one of them in there? Not at the moment. No. The music's quite good. I do feel a little bit of dread here. Uh, who was that? Oh, and Zodja heard the voice. That's, it's weird. It's like we've U-turned now and we've gone back to the commander hiding the voice. Like, you remember I had that little theory about maybe they inserted that scene where you tell the doctor that you can hear the voice? Do you guys remember that? Does it not feel like maybe they wrote the whole expansion, the idea was we were hiding it, and then they got cold feet because they thought it seemed out of character for the commander, and now... Do you guys think that maybe that was going on? I don't know. Anyway, wouldn't it be funny if one of those options was the wrong option, right? <laughs> and it's a way for the arena net to be like, no, those weren't actually happy times. You're, you're not actually happy with Zodja. No, you're, game over. <laughs> 
never happened in a million years. The Avatar of Rage. Open grand finale. Rare enough that I get to do that. I'm going to stay for my extra quickness. Oh, did I get my air orb up? I don't think I did. Please tell me they can finish the Craven off over there. I hope they can. <laughs> here he is, he's Garin. What are you doing here? It's Garin, it's us. Sounds like you got a heck of a cold, friend. <laughs> One fate awaits everyone. So Ceres is in his head at the moment, and Pather says, Not "After him." Pather says, "That's actually okay," but Ceres is going to come in your head in a minute, and that's not going to be okay. Uh, this is a good instance. So I, I'm going to just give you guys a bit of background here. I was wondering the whole time I was playing this expansion whether we would actually see Isgarin, because I was like, "Well, they have to make a whole model for him." Are they going to just cop out and have him killed or something? Uh, and I really wasn't sure, but you do. I think that could have been a cutscene. You know, it's always interesting to wonder, should it be a cutscene or should it happen dynamically in-engine? I think this was a moment. His actual appearance there, I think, could have been a little cutscene. Just like five seconds or something of him porting in. But you want to take in his visage, right? Um, and you do get him. I suppose, really, now that I'm on my second playthrough, it's pretty obvious. If they're going to kill Mabon then they have to give us his Garin, right? Especially if his Garin's in the key art and all that shit. You've got to get some his Garin content. You've got to. So have no fears, guys. There is plenty of his Garin. I know we're at the end of the story here. Manifestation of bitterness is his Garin, tag at the moment. We're here to embrace you. Oh. It looks like you've got plenty of help without my hand. Mabon made a choice when they brought the Wayfinder in, and I didn't agree at first. However... Mabon's optimism got him killed. Unfortunate, but not blameless. Ah, you speak of our friend with disdain? You've been here. Compromised. Um, yeah, in chat, Leffy. <laughs> Leffy with the green name and the silver tail. Man, there must only be a couple of people on the planet that actually have that tag now. You're one of an exclusive few being a YouTube member like that. That's so cool. Uh, obviously, we've got Rocker there with the gold one as well. Anyway, yes, um, he's just a gin. I did say before, I said, I, I can't remember exactly what I phrased it. i got to be honest, I am a bit disappointed by his model. He, he is essentially just a gin. Just a blue gin. And even then they wrote that little bit of lore in there about, oh, he changed the color of his skin to look a bit more like a djinn, you know, so maybe they've justified it or whatever. Whether it's justified or not, if I'm going to get a seer in Guild Wars 2, I kind of want a seer in Guild Wars 2. If they're going to build him up as like one of the main characters of the expansion, I kind of want him to look as cool and novel as possible. And unlike with Mabon, who was really big, um, his Garen's quite small, actually. And it's really weird how... They kept Mabon big because I guess Lazarus was big, but Lazarus was only big because the fake Lazarus was big. <laughs> so, and so the season three, episode six appearance of a Massar had a really giant Massar, but only to make it consistent with the Massar we'd been interacting with earlier in the season. Oh wow, that mechanic does fail. That's funny. And now we have another Massar in Secrets of the Obscure Mabon, who's also big and didn't have to be. I would have thought they'd make a seer big as well because they're equivalents, surely. But no, they make Isgarin small, and it's kind of weird, right? Like, I don't quite get that. Um, but maybe they do that to because Jin are big, Zomboros and Kadim are big, so by maybe making him small, we will think of him less of a Jin or something? I don't know. Whatever that thing is, strike it down before it returns to his body. Do we collect these for any meaningful reason? Oh, we got to kill the cause of hatred. We do a lot of damage to those. Holy shit. 
Wouldn't be surprised if some of these become some of the CM mechanics. Oh, are we about to get a CM, by the way, in the next patch? It's probably Shattered Observatory CM, right? I hope they do those well. I really hope they do them well. So purge more corruption. I can sense his rage inside of that swirl. Don't let it return to him. Okay, this one's of resentment. He's like gravity welling me. Oh no, they're shadowful wells actually, that's quite cool. I haven't really been looking very closely at um, the names of the attacks that he uses against us. <laughs> Push back, Iskarin. What? Do you need my power now? Why not look to your new wayfinder? Yeah, his glasses are really interesting. To take an axe to Maban's memory. We need to keep up with him. Do you think he's... He's not in his right mind. Something's off. He's... You know Iskarin. He can be cavalous. But not uncivil. He's headed straight for the source. We can't lose track of him. Oh, we can mount up here as well. It's interesting. This whole time I've been thinking, do I want to get on a raptor? And I've sort of been resisting it, but I mean, why not? More cryptus. It'd be cool if everyone else mounted up with us. One of my favorite little details from POF, you know, you get on a mount and so does Ritlock. He gets on his little raptor or whatever. Speaking about character deaths, Ritlock is one of the very few characters in this series who I think we've had more than enough interaction time with that it would be a real gut punch to see him die. But again, you run this thing, it's like I said with Timey, is that not just going to make people feel bad? I've always just wanted an old man Ritlock arc, like the grey-haired Ritlock. I still think, guys, you know, the way to save this story was the ice theory. The fucking ice theory. That we actually, the, or the whole Primordis thing, it was all just a fever dream. We've been in a block of ice since Drizzlewood, and we wake up. It's been like 20 years or whatever, an old man Ritlock's standing over us. <laughs> I still believe in the ice theory. It would be the best. I will not drop it. Straight, Commander. Do you think you're helping them? Do you think you're doing anything by causing more pain here? Don't let him get to you, Wayfinder. I'll Mabon try. chose to trust me, and you can too. I may not be a wizard. You brought the world to the brink of ruin. Do you realize if you hadn't killed Zaitan? Did you not see what the Elder Dragons destroyed with every cycle? The lives they ruined? You didn't witness the terror they wrought firsthand. You hid. There is a lie. This is big stuff. This and is really good. You don't see it. But how could you? I exist at the edge. You scurry below. Look at this. This is the, this is my kind of shit. I really like that. Not only is that written really evocatively, like the whole debate is very real. I really like it. You know, it's the do you save the village thing. And he's like, fucking no, just let let Zaitan destroy all these I people. I protected this world for you couldn't fathom. I think they can. And they've saved it just the same, Dusty Codger. Lee is a bit too chipper there. Reactions. This is all the product of a reaction. Your emotional decision. I think they can. Ho, 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 ho. He's sort of like skipping around, you know? It's like this intense stuff. Reach my age. See what I've seen. And maybe you'd start to understand. Your I'm... eyes have flashed with parades and songs, celebrations to honor the blood you spilled. Sit in the shadows for a while. Would you save the world if no one saw you do it? Well, yes, yeah. Of course. Because the other thing is, this is Sarah speaking really through is Garin's lens, you know. Also, they were the manifest manifestations of impulse there, and I didn't want to DPS too hard and skip dialogue. Oh, hi. 
And just as I'm enjoying myself, it's over. This world. Stay away from this place. We follow. He will hear us, Wayfinder. The higher the tower, the longer the fall. <laughs> it's interesting, the mask there with like the six eyes is very Abaddon-y. Be stubborn as you like, but we aren't going to abandon you, whether or not you disparage your friends. The Wayfinder has fought with us. They were there for Mabon when you weren't, curator. Mabon. <laughs> Yeah, this upskirt here, by the way, people in the Spud Discord were talking about this on day one, that he had no body, and you could just, like, look up and see that he had no body. And when I played it, everyone in my adventuring party, we all saw as well that he had no body, and it really sucks, man, because that whole Jin thing... Uh, come on, he hasn't even got a fucking body. Like, it's very Jinny. do you know what I mean? It's like... So, I don't know. Gather that magic up, quickly! Like, he doesn't really feel like a living thing. He feels like an elemental of some kind, which is because he's so much like a goddamn djinn. Alright, the essence of unity. We throw the essence there of unity There we go. Warm your bones. It's working. Okay. Throw two, so he moves quick, I guess. Is that speeding him up? Before these guys spawned in there, I was so scared it just bugged. You guys have no idea. He has special protective magics to hide his underside from uninvited gawkers. You've had some takes, Mandela. I think that's I think that's my favourite. <laughs> that's excellent. That is brilliant. All right, go, go, go. Feel my unity. Feel it. Kind of want to swap to Tempest just to eye of the storm and see whether it will run quicker. They could give him a new model later. Yeah, I, I, I doubt it. I mean, really, try to put yourself into Arena Net's shoes right now. They're probably really deeply into X, Mini X Pack 2, aren't they? Right? What do you guys think about that? Do you think they have like a Gayala Delve situation going on right now with the next three patches? And I, let me just say for the record, I do not think that sounds particularly good because the scope the of Giala Del patches felt way too thin for me. My faith was as broken as my body, but you took me in. Let someone else play protector for once. Oh, I just remember the thing in chat I read earlier. Someone said, what if they did five maps instead of two, but they're tiny maps and they're in the depths and they're all over? That would be amazing. I'll go you one better. I genuinely would love five small maps but they don't have mounts so you get the intimate like I, I just love the exploration in this game and, and stuff when there weren't mounts I really do I'm sorry and I know people say no that's a terrible idea mounts are amazing Creed, blah 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 I really really prefer the feel of Guild Wars 2 when there's not mounts if they were like five dry toppy style mini maps that's like my dream thing for, ex for uh, exploration that would be so good and I think it would feel bigger and better than two big maps. I really do. Five mini ones. I think even four mini ones would feel bigger than five big, uh, than two big. And just if it's the depths thing, just be like, oh, you know, the mounts there, they can't survive in the, the oppressive darkness. They need the light, sorry, you know. It's a bit like in the Ice Breed Saga, they flirted with that. One of the strike missions you do, the, like the Ice Goat, the first strike mission, you can't mount there and it says it's, cause it's, it's too cold for the mounts, you know. They just need to have the confidence to apply shit like that to uh, open world. And, I, don't know. I believe in a lot of other models for like mounted exploration. Please, I can't like mounts after map comps, stuff like away. that. Who is it? 
Epoch. Oh, much worse. No, it's someone else. How do you silence? There's his voice, Cyrus. Cyrus does not speak much, so and I like it. He's got a very distinct voice. Lose it. Dagda and I will try to expel whatever or whoever has their claws in him. Soja, Wayfinder, you two need to keep him distracted. I'm with you. Astral Ward, ready yourselves. Man, the sound of that barrier is awesome. <laughs> that chick's really good. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. I know. Your spirit. It's been a while since we dance like this. Lies your hands. So listen. Omnitas is a place of tranquility. Knowledge. I didn't guard this place for a century to watch it fall. I'm just gonna be quiet for a minute because I I don't know when they'll speak or how much more. This is pretty cool. Let's see damage taken here. Chaos Vortex, Zealot's Embrace, Shadowfall. They're all player skills. A mix of Guardian, Spectre, and Mesmer. So he's tethered to Dagda. This is not the strike for what it's worth. And his Garin's strike would have been interesting. There's definitely space for it here in the story, right? But this platform gets reused for the meta as well. This is where we were fighting Norris. So I don't know how much damage we'll take here. Let's see. Oh, I gotta get used to that. You can't Q Arcane Brilliance. Because it's a heal, it will over overwrite the Q. So there I actually just missed my fire ability. She's taking some damage here. So we just cried out for Zoja. I need to break the bar, do I? Might be hard. With my current self, I don't really have much Let for break bars. Steam evaporate. Let go. Wayfinder, get behind me. <laughs> He's now tethered by two of them. So a rift opens. I think I'm supposed to get sucked in. Am I supposed to get sucked in? Okay, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to run away. That's weird. They told me to get behind her, but then she doesn't get sucked, and I do. <sighs> All right, we're back. We're back in Naos, guys. Really tired of this. Manifest yourself some time, Ooh, this is pretty cool. You know, I really like this moment. Where? Naos. What do you know about Nyos's Garin? His Garin, the curator. You're the one that's been toying with my thoughts. Visually striking, at least. To see you here, in the Temple of Febe. This is grand. That's what happens when you fight back. 
Even though my brother is gone, his dream is mine. The bug will see that Deimos and I are truly the same. I am just as capable. I've brought him the head of his garden. You need to face him alone. I can. I... I don't know if I... If I can give you just enough to move. There we go. So he, he cleanses yeah. us. It's Garin! And then there's you. <laughs> oh. The experiences you've had since last we met. Good people have died because of you and your king. <laughs> Look how cool that animation is. Audacious since our last meeting. The Wayfinder. That's what they call you now. Mm. You are mine. So obviously we've all seen that relic a million times now, the relic of Ceres. So he's drawing out my malice. I don't really know what I do with this mechanic. Oh, that's me, the malicious shadow of Liss. I'm trying to go slow here. There's so much to talk about there. So, one thing that's already impressed the hell out of me with Secrets of the Obscure is how much history they put in with the Wizard's Court, right? Well, if you think about it, they kind of got to do it on the other side of the conflict as well. They got to do it with the demons. They got to do it with, with Nios and its inhabitants and what's going on. And you'll find here already in that conversation, there's a lot of history. We've got this guy, Ceres. We've got the Demon King, Eparch. We've got Ceres' brother, Deimos, who we killed already in the Bastion of the Penitent Raid. And now we're hearing about Febe as well. Febe was all about autonomy, he says. I don't really know what that means exactly. It's an interesting thing to say, though, in the context of this seeming like brainwashing ascension process that's going on with the Wizard's Core. So maybe there'll be stuff going on with that. We'll probably have to kill that. Oh my god, it's tanky as well. Why are you so li tanky, Liss, Imobe? Alright, and I think I collect these orbs. They do a bit of damage to me, but not too much. I, I really don't know the mechanic here. But see, this is the glaive of House Nephus. So I think House Nephus, guys, is Ceres, who we're fighting here, and is the antagonist for this. Deimos, who got caught in Tyria. Febe, maybe? And Paytha. Because remember, Paytha said that she's their sister. So Paith is a part of this as well. I think I need to just run away from here so that Liss spawns far away so I get plenty of time to, to kill her. I'm going to try and block this. Blocking doesn't work. And then we collect orbs again. You tried. And yet you failed. Again. But this time, your friend... We're like frozen in the middle of the craziest animation. <laughs> the masked wizard was treacherous. But when he stumbled, I was already crouching. You killed Maban? <laughs> I like that word, Nectarus. I could only let go of his gun for the breath of a moment. Long enough for him to witness the act. But not long enough to act. So that's really sad. Is Garin saw Mabon die? Um Are they done speaking? See, this is interesting to me as well. If the homeland of the Massar is here, somewhere else in Nios, this is the Temple of Febe, but presumably there's a whole goddamn world out here, right? If this is the homeland of the Massar, 
Surely Ceres would know about the Massar. So that description there of Mabon as the masked wizard, I think there's something in that. I think there's a reason ArenaNet never just said Massar, just plainly. Maybe it's because Ceres does know, or they're playing it close to their chest, because they know that's a mystery they want players to be wondering about at the moment, or something. I mean, what do you guys make of that? He calls him the masked wizard. Is that because Massar are so common to him, that's not an interesting way to define someone? Or a meaningful way to define someone, but the fact he was a wizard in a mask is... My Jade bot has forsaken me. <laughs> oh, and then we get the giggle. Man, if this had been a combat tonic, it'd be so I good. Smile, your new friend, through the veil. Righteous, yet diminished. I think they could have built up that moment of us dying there a bit better. <laughs> Tell me, who is your latest snare? The champion of an elder dragon. Is Garen's resolve was succulent, but this one has tasted the end. Look how good these demons look, oh, seriously. Me, what do you plan on doing with your new champion? Take them to the king. I have not decided. The wizard was Edmark's prize. So, you plan on killing them yourself? The mocap's so good, the way he lifted the wing up. A very inquisitive, sister. Oh, not at all. I'm pleased. The I way her neck vibrates. For saving me the effort. Your honor died with Deimos. Ebark is foolish. And so... You don't like how Pather sounds like Orin, really. I was saying the Quaggan thing. You down one more time, Get up, my brother. Together. Uh, sorry, my brother is vain and dull, but he will kill us both if we give him an opening. So yeah, she comes to. It's a cool twist, right? It's a cool moment. Do I need to be with her during this? Possibly. Does she have like permanent alacrity and stuff? Also, she's got a telegraph like I can speak with her. Oh no, I can press F and make her turn around. Yeah, Pather, she's a cryptist lord. She's giving herself alacrity, regen, and might. I wonder if that's AoE. Like if I stand near her, does she give it to me as well? Oh, he's drawing out my malice. Let's move over again. There we go, this is the evil us. Yeah, I think that moment there where he's gonna kill us that was kind of a bit of a whiff. They could have really, and I mean, I would have exactly alluded to and copy pasted even because people, it would have been nice to be remembering. Um, the, you know, when Balthazar is killing us in POF, right? On the mountain, that is a really cool moment. And you can really feel it. He like slaps you down, you fight. He slaps you down, you fight. Yeah, I did already. I think that we should have had that. So when he finally does the death blow and you wake up in the underworld, you know it's the end, right? You really feel it the way that they did in that fight. I think we needed to be at that same place here before Pather comes in. As it was, they did it, it was kind of mute and empty, you know? So, oh, well, those orbs are getting in. Let's see what happens when they get in. They empower him for 50% more damage for 30 seconds. But anyway, Together. we'll talk more about the demon, demonology and the lore and all that in a minute. It's really important I dodge those, I think, while he has the 50% damage buff. Where is she? She's there. I'm going to go halfway and then dodge Have through. You always been a traitor? Suppression. Only to not to Niles. That is hysterical. So this phase is in the strike. He splits, and the one you kill 
Like, each one does a different effect. One does the pulse, one does the wall. And you need to, like, pick which one... The one you kill... The effect will go away, I'm hoping. I don't want the wall to keep going. The wall's boon ripping me and stuff. And it's like a double wall. So this is the facet of Cirrus, and so is that as well. I don't know how we tell just by looking at them which is doing which animation. But here, so... I don't know, I don't know. We'll, we'll get to the strike in the post-game bit and you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna block that. I don't wanna waste all my might. Share with her again. This is a good fight, by the way, for single-player balance. Get a break bar. Yeah, so you might have been under the impression that Deimos, you know, the Bash and the Penitent Demon, that he was just a bit of trivia, a bit of fun, whatever. Okay, which one do we pick this time? I guess I'll do the one that she's doing. But no, there's actually a lot here about, you know, that like, uh, Ceres was jealous of Eparch, of uh, Deimos. Eparch took Deimos much more seriously. Of the two, Deimos, the one we kill in the raid, is the more powerful demon. I think that's a bold thing as well for the, the, the writers to do, because again, that's a, a risk of undermining this story. To say we already killed a stronger demon kind of undermines Ceres a bit, but it doesn't really. Well, the fear would be that undermines it a bit. Yeah, together. Okay, we go in now. But yeah, and I think the balance here is alright. You know, it's a bit long, but I think this is the way to do it. It's kind of easy still, because it has to be easy. It always has to be easy. Otherwise, you end up having to nerf it like the Corticus fight in Season 3, right? At Corticus's Manor. But, you know, it's it's still long, and it, it has spectacle, and I think that's all you need for the story instances. Lots of time for the dialogue to go. So, yeah, as I mentioned, Aether's kind of ruined on a replay because it's abundantly clear now throughout this dialogue and this mission she's a good guy. As far as she's a friend, an enemy of our enemy at the moment, at the very least, right? She doesn't want to invade Tyria. She just wants to protect this place. And we'll find out what from and why in a minute. But, um, so she's kind of a good guy. So all that intrigue, you know, ooh, the voice in her head, what's going on? It's really good on first run. Saw not there on a second. Oh, okay, unblockable. By the way, I love his title here, the Glaive of House Nephus. I think we read that at the start. If you go back to part one, I think that's there as well. We now. Okay, and one final purge. Again, with the heart of the obscure, weighing sorrow contributing still. He did not deserve to dream. And remember, Naos is the realm of dreams. That's a really interesting line to me. So, and he's dead. Rip Ceres. It would seem I placed my bet on the right champion. Well fought, Wayfinder. I don't know if we would have survived that without you. Perhaps not. <laughs> what shape of body do I want Epoch to have? We here too long. Epoch is likely watching. Watching. Um, what shape? Uh, I want him to be shadowy. Like really shadowy and missing a head because Epoch is just the new name that Menzies has taken for himself. I'm sure they Yeah, that's it, guys. I'm telling you, Epark is Menzies. And is also E. <laughs> and is also Farron. Alright, uh, story number 10, Treachery. So this is the epilogue. I could shove this off into the post-game episode, but I think it makes a bit more sense to do it now. 
There's a lot of conversation here and dialogue. So in an earlier part, I mentioned this. This is like an ending ending now. And I think this is going to feel weird in the future when all the patches are out and you can just play it all at once. I like this one. Thank the spirits. They've got his Garin. See, just fine. Ah, that's about how tall I expected the Wayfinder to be. I think this running joke. Explain to me what this Davrek is doing here. I do not want to see this place in ruins over something petty. Are you well? How is your mind? Is your power your head? I am home. Wasn't sure you'd make it out of that one. Nor I. I need to connect you to one of the celestial strands. If someone could get my needle. I could use some water. I like that line as well. But you don't need it. It reminds me that I'm still alive. Also because you're a water gin, bro. Right? Clearly that's a water gin. We have questions to answer. I would very much like to talk to you, Pather. Oh, and I, you. Your Highness. No titles. Not in my home. Oh. Curious. This thing about the titles people Let's have been talking about in Discord. We're more private. We needn't stress anyone else with that conversation. People have been talking about, like, the demons all love titles, but Isgarin doesn't or something. And maybe there's something, something in that. to discuss with you. Okay, so will Zoja ascend? And real candid conversation with a goddamn seer in a minute. So um, let's do the Zoja bit first. None of these guys have optional dialogue yet. I'm, uh, I'm so glad you're okay. When we woke up, the sky was... Everything okay, Zoja? Come on, shaman. Let's give them a minute. You just... Let me talk for a minute, please. No, what if in I want to talk to and the game's going to interrupt me? Flow and access the magical ecosystem, there's a ritual. It makes your memories fuzzy, the personal ones, at least. Uh, you've probably heard about that uh, unfortunate side effect. When I, I thought you and Iskarin were dead, I, I just... And now I just, I feel very selfish for humoring the idea at all. I mean, won't I be doing the same to you? If I choose to ascend, won't, won't I be leaving you behind? Destiny's Edge? I just... Zoja, I'm not going anywhere. Neither are you. Complicated wizard spells are no. You found a family. You aren't alone. I won't remember much of our past together. And our friends can't know I'm here. Not not yet, anyway. I'll be isolated. Another hint that will probably reveal themselves to the world. Figure that out. But it doesn't mean that I can't be friends with whatever version of you I meet on the other side. I... Well... You're a good friend, Commander. I feel like the Commander's a bad friend Your there, friend actually. I think I would like to hear a lot more about that process before in, before endorsing it. Better clarity is all. I'm okay. Really, Dacta. Like, I seriously, alarm bells are still ringing in my mind about that whole process, but I don't know. I mean, I really can't tell if the game expansion, whatever, wants me to feel that way about it. It just feels weird, you know. Also, yeah, what is Isgarin... Why was he king of? Why is he your highness? I guess that's a question to ask. Uh, is he the wizard king? Is that? Is there a demon king and a wizard king? Have we ever heard the title wizard king? That's a cool title. I think that's an amazing title. Um. But yeah. Anyway, so there you go. So those those guys are gonna do that, and we're gonna go have a chat with Pather and his Garin. Also, she talks about Destiny's Edge there, which I kind of like. Because Zodja should be thinking about Destiny's Edge and should. But Destiny's Edge isn't a thing really anymore. It hasn't been for years, you know? It's, oh, these patches, guys. I'm. Oh, these patches. Are they going to include, like, a se sequence where Logan comes up here with Ritlock, 
you know, and meet Zoja. That would be cool as fuck. Uh, I really want Lo. If there is Fallen Divinity's Reach in Nios, and Lo and there's like evil Logan. If we, oh, oh <laughs> so good. We gotta have real Logan in that story. It and then they can bond over their blind pod time. Just, be so good. I realize this. We find a. I'd have preferred to welcome you to our home myself, but Mabon had other intentions. You spared him. Unfortunately, our troubles are not over. As I have never had the chance, I am Petha of House Nefers. Though houses and titles given by Abark are less than reputable. But in my world, it carries weight. We'll need that. So she can get us connections and open doors in that realm. Does not mean this fight is well and done. The opposite seems to be true. You use language that suggests an alliance. Let me pose this to the Wayfinder wizard. Ebark is alive and well, thriving even, on the backs of my kind. Societies limp under poor leaders and recover like clockwork. Ebark is not comparable to Tyrian leaders. He does not simply drain them of wealth or land. He has taken them to eating them. He's... he's feeding on other cryptus? Our blood is his blood. And eventually, we will be dissolved. And that is tragic. Killing Abark is a mutual goal, is Garen. I don't meddle in foreign politics, Lady Love Lisa. this. Letting him devour your entire people while upsetting could ultimately help This you. guy's awesome. I love the way he's written. Can't start another invasion without bodies, can he? Very blunt. But he can. Very analytical. Himself and do the same to this world. And he is quite... Can he? We could just rebuild the world's fire. I've away many beings from outside, especially after the gods and the damage they wrought. More sneering at the gods. Love it as well. I have also neglected to ask for help and to accept it when I've needed it most. Wayfinder? Thoughts? Also, by the way, one thing I haven't talked about here, now that we've got a quick breather, is Isgaran's voice. That's another part of, like, the Seer aesthetic, the Seer vibe. Um, Seer's, we barely heard speaking Guildhall's one, very minimal voice acting, but they were cutscene, they were voice acted, and it's a lot like the Glint voice situation, you know, where Glint sounded, like, very old. <laughs> a very old lady. Um, like croaking into the microphone and in Guild Wars 2 they they changed the way she sounds completely um, the same thing I, I could always have guessed would probably happen with the Sears the Sears were super alien they didn't look like blue gin they looked really fucking weird very alien and you know probably helped by the fact there wasn't even very many poly on the model it was just a weirdly shaped thing right but it sounded really weird it had this, like, almost like goofy 60s sci-fi vibe to its voice. Ah, the I have the Ascension will offer you the protection you we, you seek. It was like that. It was, like, weird. Find the Eidolon or, or something like that. I don't know. So then there's a question of what do they do? They kind of make him sound like a dwarf, I think, here in this. Um... I would have liked to have seen they go with an alien voice again, but maybe not one so goofy and fucking weird. <laughs> but I don't know. Anyway, um, here, this is weird, because I think, honestly, the way this is all set up, what I know about Isgara and what I know about this conflict so far, um, 
I would I would reject her. I would reject the alliance proposal. I would say, look, they're eating each other. By the way, the whole eating each other thing, that's cool as fuck. That's super dark and weird and edgy and just fucked up and worthy of a demon story. And I think that's really cool. And that's totally my vibe. I love that. Um, and so this explains that there is... There are factions within Nios, Pather, namely here, that don't want to merge the worlds. They just want to make Nios happy for themselves instead of devouring themselves. And eating themselves is interesting as well when I think about the Elder Dragons and the consumption of magic. And, you know, stuff that's happening on Tyria is kind of a reflection of what's going on in Nios now, right? Does it kind of mean that Eparch is kind of like the Elder Dragon equivalent? He's like a demon Elder Dragon equivalent for his reality, right? And he's eating them to power up. It's, uh, it would be really cool. I don't know whether Arena are doing this because they kind of just wanted to rush away from the Elder Dragon stuff, it felt like. But wouldn't it be really cool if essentially what they're doing here is they're showing something in the process of becoming a Su Wan type entity, you know? Becoming something really powerful that's gathered all that magic. And so here we see it in a formative stage. And that's a way of making, oh, this expansion is just about another Elder Dragon, just a demon version or whatever. I, I wouldn't want to be so reductive because that sounds crap when you're that reductive, but it's an interesting thought. Anyway, uh, yeah, to follow this along, I think Isgarin would just turn her away and be like, okay, we're just going to rebuild the World Spire here. It only, it only uh, faulted because of Su Wan dying. We could fix this. Uh, push an alliance while we rebuild. And actually, I think a really cool way that the story could go that could track is Garin as a kind of fucked up sort of guy is, that always takes the big picture wouldn't it be kind of awesome if is Garin says to Pather okay we can have an alliance Pather helps us buy time until we rebuild the world spire and as soon as it's rebuilt is Garin's like alright fuck her then that's it and she's like struggling she's like i'm getting eaten i'm you know i need help we, all, we really need help we, we agreed to an alliance and his guy's like i don't need you anymore it's not my problem anymore i don't get involved and he sort of turns his but very coldly very logical very, but very fucking brutal which is essentially what he's been doing to people for thousands of years turn his back on the elder dragon shit he's all like so one in that way right i think that would be really cool it's not a happy story but i don't believe it has to be he, he's not a hero there but i don't believe he has to be Anyway, I don't know what Arena have got planned. Uh, can we trust her is the question. I think we do have other choices, so I'm going to say that. Don't we have another choice? It doesn't sound like we have much of a choice. But Arena Net doesn't want me to I think that. promise. No deception. The Astral Ward needs to recover before we take action. But I'm not opposed to hearing a plan. <laughs> Your air is a delicacy to breathe. And I could use that indulgence. Keep in mind, Operation Mosaic used up resources. I mean, yeah, we just have to take it that word that they're low on resources. I mean, we're living in Magical Terria, the land of MacGuffins, right? The idea that there's an unsolvable problem is very difficult to take for me as a seasoned Guild Wars 2 player at this point. But we have to believe that they exist, right? Um... Okay, can I speak with you? Not yet. We will be able to. This is a long instance, okay? So, I'm going to read this report here. We already read that. Oh, it's interesting that this is still interactable here, though. This thing about, like, why do high cryptists have so much more intelligence and motivation and autonomy, and low cryptists do not? And they're eating each other, and there's this autonomy thing. Do you only get autonomy? Do you only get personality and, and decision-making once you've consumed enough of your own kin or something? It's a weird thought, isn't it? All right. So do we trust Pather? So I guess I do. I'm pretty much squarely in the camp of Pather's a good guy right now. It just sort of feels like she's the the demon hero that ArenaNet want for this story. And she'll be our ally now. I don't really see them writing her to betray us. I would like that, though. I think that would be interesting. They've certainly pulled the wool over me, if, if that's the idea. She doesn't seem very self-interested. Um, she seems really weird and fucking odd, but I sort of just buy that she's an ally. 
I don't know. Am I wrong in that? Do you, are you guys still uneven with Pather? I trust that Iskarin will help where he's able. But now, I want to ask you. You have saved your home world more than once. And now, I am asking you... This is a great line as well here. Mine. Wanna walk me through the plan? For now... I just need you. The Cryptus would be overwhelmed if too many of Isgarin's people came through. But if you come in with me and help rally support, we can prepare them for the push against Ebok. Do you think they'll trust me? Far more than they trust their king. And I need them to trust me. Then I'll go with you. Good. I'll leave you to your friends, Wayfinder. I'm sure you've much to discuss. So I think pretty transparently, I've got to look to see if an NPC's walking over about to speak. I think pretty transparently the next patch is in Naos. I mean, she's literally saying to us, will you come there like as a spy with me, as an agent with me? And with all those little crit I, I get this really brilliant image in my head of all these like scurrying critters, like demon critters, hiding in the shadows, scared, fearful of their own king in there. And we're going to rally them to our side. We're going to fight alongside Cryptus. I think it's really cool. And yeah, it seems like... I mean, just... I, I know it might be difficult for you to imagine right now, guys. But a year from now or whatever, you're just a player playing through this. You're minutes away from the next patch. You're minutes away from the next... And surely we're going back to Nios. Now, we could go to Nios in story, but the, the map itself is still on Tyria. Stuff like that. So maybe it's not Nios, but I think the next map is Nios. I think it's Nios, and I think maybe one of the Fractals is in there as well. Because um, I, I will not get off of that topic now. <laughs> um, what's the other thing I was going to say about this? Yeah, it's interesting that she just flat out says, by the way, you could overwhelm the Cryptus if a bunch of you guys go there right now. Like, isn't that essentially... Can't I tell Isgar in that now? And he'll be like, okay, let's invade. <laughs> Fine, overwhelm them, fuck them. Surely that's on his mind somewhat. Um, and yeah, we got this interesting thing where we got demons now and we're kind of allying a little bit with them and uh, there's a lot of subject material to get through. There's a lot to talk about and chew on with these next few patches. And I can't remember. There was something else I really wanted to say. I can't remember. Let's press F on her. You wear an expression of curiosity. It's not an unattractive look on you. Do you desire something particular on me? So yeah, I get to voice her now, so she'll speak quicker. <laughs> uh, so, you weren't a rav- Oh no, these are all going to be voiced, probably. Uh, so, you weren't a ravenous demon waiting to kill me yourself? <laughs> of course not. The emotions of your people may smell of wine, but your flesh is not for me. I first tasted your aura quite some time ago. I didn't know it was you then. But you died. And then came back. I felt that ripple. Oh, this is so good. if it was brief. There are many realms that linger near yours. I assume they felt it too. When you fell into Cerus's trap and first came to Nios, I felt that ripple again. Your life has been precarious. Besides, I needed you alive. They're so good. I love how deeply they're thinking about that moment we die. You know, it's a big moment in the story. It deserves to be referred to multiple times. And that's what they're doing there. And they're talking about how, like, there was a ping, basically, that rippled throughout the mists when we died. Um, and we were briefly in the, in, uh, the underworld there. That's so cool. Um, 
Oh my god, while she was speaking, I remembered the other... Oh, I remember. So the other thing I was going to say, this line where she says, you've saved your world multiple times, now I want to ask you to save mine, that line, just imagine that one line, that is like the best line for a trailer, right? Like, if they do a trailer for the next patch, it needs to open with that line. Because that, that expresses beautifully... We're moving on from an old story, we're moving to a new. It's not about Tyria right now, it's about this other world. You've saved the world multiple, your world multiple times, now I ask you to save mine. And then the adrenaline music kicks in and we, we're on a fly-through of Naos or something. That would be so good, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, that, that, was, that was all I thought. But yeah, this thing here, they talk about multiple realms. Heard it. I wonder what uh, if Arena now have solid ideas of what those might be or what might be happening there. Is there Naos and some other Greek place that's going to get involved or something? Um, and this weird Massart connection, that there could be Massart in Naos. Someone in chat just now joked like, Oh, it, do they not wear masks in Naos? Do the Massart look different because they don't wear masks? There, That would be kind of amazing. I actually see space for that. That would be so awesome. The music's lovely now. Right now that's new. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's all new. And it is good. You're right. Why did you save me? At first it was simple curiosity. Ceres was not wrong. You are a delicacy to us. Ceres also angers so easily. I couldn't miss the opportunity to throw a stone into his palm. But then I saw what you could do. I felt what you had done. We may be born of different rules. But strength recognizes strength. And helping me kill Aceris proved all that I needed. Oh, uh, people saying when she says overwhelmed, she just means that like they won't trust us. There would be too many and they wouldn't want to ally. Yeah, I, I, I get that. That tracks a lot better. That makes a lot more sense. Also, <laughs> WP smash or pass, Pather? I don't know. I. I would have to be very horny and very drunk. She is not very <laughs> attractive, is she really? I mean, Jesus, is she naked there? She doesn't even have nipples or anything. She's very odd. It look that looks like a person without skin, really. I mean, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say pass for now. <laughs> you were, uh, and finally, do you not mourn for your brother? Ceres and Deimos. That is just muscle. Horrible. Epoch encouraged that. He raised them to follow his orders and to consume. At least Deimos had the slightest bit of reservation. But even he was too focused on bloodlust. Managed to wiggle past his Garin's barriers, only to get trapped and killed. Ceres? Never stood as tall as our brother. Not in Abark's eyes. He tried, but death was his fate. This is great. They pay so much and like. Dying by your hand was a far kinder fate than by Abark's. They pay so much deference so no, to Deimos. I do not mourn him. I mourn the brothers I never had. You know, Deimos easily could have just been this minor little detail and they don't talk about much, but no, they're like, look. You know, they really paint a picture there. Ceres is a bit more wild and bloodthirsty. Deimos was a little bit less so. Eparch esteemed Deimos higher. Deimos even got into this realm. By the way, I have a little head cannon here that I think is super cool. He wiggled through. Deimos wiggled through and appeared at the Bastion, right? And got trapped instantly. Do you guys like the idea? If the Massar are also from Naos, all right. What if the Massar were in conflict with the demons in Naos? And when the Massar that were running this as a prison found one, they were like, "Oh, we know what this thing is. Let's fucking let's put it. Let's trap it and put it in Saul." And that's a two for one, right? That's a two for one for them because they deal with a demon that they're familiar with. And they get to fuck up and torture Saul at the same time. And that's that's just how nasty the Massar are. I really like that idea that that's how he got trapped. Because he, because the Massar trapped him. And it's because they knew because of their Naos connection or something. Which hopefully the next patches we'll talk about. 
So you go, nothing at this moment. So that's Pather's dialogue. That's Pather, that's it now, I think. Unless, the, so someone just asked, hey WP, is this the end of the series? Well, I'm going to do a post-game series. So there is more lore. There's lore I've never seen. As far as I know, that's it for Pather now. Maybe she has a side quest at the end? I don't know. Let's do is Garen. You're my new wayfinder. Apparently. I am. And you're the one we fought through an army of cryptus to save. I am. It's Garin. Very informal for someone who's never met me. Sorry. I've heard so much about you. I don't care what you call me. Is Garin is comfortable. He is comfortable. But I've been called many names. And all of them are as true See, he's like as Gandalf. You know, he's Mithrandir and he's got all I've different names. Many lives. And I haven't always looked like this. I didn't, always been I didn't get these glasses until recently. You first caught my eye in your pursuit of Zaitan. I started to piece it together. You've been watching. Why didn't you help? It's not my job to interfere with nature. The path unfurled as expected. You're alive. Most of your friends are alive. Most of them? Oh, calm. Life is death, and things could have been far worse, I promise. He's great. I really I like this guy. Wayfinder. Your aid was clearly needed here, and will be needed as you march with your friend. I think Guild Wars needs a sobering influence like this. You know, someone's all calm or oh, okay, relax now. Someone who with that vibe is so perfect to bounce off of Guild Wars, which is often very melodramatic and very emotional and very, you know, like heart to hearty. Uh, he works really well in this story, I think. And it helps that he's a seer and stuff. So obviously I was going to be a fucking fanboy instantly. Their bifocals. <laughs> uh, I'm curious. Can you tell me about the seers? Ah, my... I don't actually know this word. Fogos, my kin. Is this a word I should know as a human being on Earth? Or is this a, a word that they've written for Tyria? My kin. I would not be surprised if I was the only one you'll ever meet. This is interesting here. I kind of don't like... They, they've written this in such a way that maybe they can put more in. But they don't know. And they just don't want to close the door. And usually I'm alright with that. But here I just sort of feel like... Eh, if we're not going to do another one, just tell me we're not going to do another one. I don't know. Mabon and I were both birthed by stubborn beings. And like the Tyrian Massar, my kind are all, ki are all dead. See, he's cl he's careful to point out that the, the Massar on Tyria are dead. But all the Seers are dead. The Seers are fucked. Not even in other realms. My kind are all dead. But he, he leaves the door open slightly. I'm so sorry. We didn't age well. And we lived in a very, uh, we lived a very difficult existence. Of all my thousands of years of self-reflection, so multiple thousands of years here, he's saying. I spent my, I barely spent my adolescence among them. I parted from the horde. See, I don't like this here. So now Arena and I are in a tricky position. It's like okay. So we'll kill Mabon, but we've got to, we've got to keep Isgarin in it. You've got to be able to spend some time with Isgarin. Well, fuck. They're going to ask him about the Seers. All right, we'll just say he didn't spend much time with them. I mean, come on. Tell me he did spend time with them and write some shit about the Seers. You know? But no, apparently he didn't spend much time with them. Because they can't use the Ascension excuse either, I guess, maybe? I don't know. I parted from the Horde after, dot, dot, dot. We once tried to... There, this is new. I mean, credit where credit's due. We once tried to fell the dragons, the elder races of Tyria. The Seer Doyen, Sidony cried for war so Sidney is the name of another seer I think and I think one of the post game collections we'll be getting in the next part is all about that is Doyen a title is it a rank I don't know is it a leader were the seers led by someone called the Doyen that's not capitalized as a proper noun though the seer Doyen again is that a word I should know Doyen Sidney cried for war but just before we were to aid the Messiah in their attack on Zaitan, Sidney decided against. 
Isn't this the reverse of what we heard before? That the Seers abandoned them, but here now we're here. That the Masar abandoned them, but now we're hearing the Seers abandon the Masar. Just before we were to aid the Masar in their attack on Zaitan, Sidney decided against. The Masar never forgave us, and I empathise with that. They would turn to bone scraps and bile, but they would hunt us for thousands of years after. A few hundred of them for all of us. Holy shit, that's cool. First, I, I don't remember reading this before, by the way. Bone Scraps and Bile is beautifully written. I love that shit. Um, makes me think about all the detritus in ore that's, like, lazing around there where Zaitan went to rest once upon a time. I like to imagine there were dead Massart there as well now. There could have been Risen Massart somewhere ambling around. There might even be right now. Um... This is crazy. I don't remember reading this. So hold on, ArenaNet have confirmed what started the Seer Massart War here. And they've said that it was based on the previous Elder Dragon Rising. And it's that the Seers betrayed the Massart. That really the Seers instigated it. And in fact, specifically, it was this guy Sidney. So I'm now extremely interested to learn about Sidney in the post game. That's going to be really interesting. Um, so hold on, does, this, does the other story still work though? So it all slots in together, does it? It's... Sidney says no, so a bunch of Masart died to Zaitan. So then when a, when another effort comes up, let's fight back, the Masart betray them and just leave. Is that it? Both stories are true, but the Seers actually started it? Um, or have I just got all this fucked up in my head and the, the idea of the Masart betraying them was never true? I'm going to have to go over the wikis. Or someone could drop me a comment or in the Discord. But uh, this is also interesting. A few hundred of them for all of us. Hold on. Is Garin is saying that there are only a few hundred seers on Ty uh, Massar on Tyria? Or is he saying that it was a few hundred that died to Zaitan? And in exchange was birthed a war that wiped out all the seers. I don't like this idea there were only a few hundred Massar here on Tyria. It felt like there was a big civilization, a lot of them, from Guild Wars 1, just based on the numbers of them and the idea that Janthir had a bunch, you know. If you think of Janthir as a continental-sized region, or at least a large fucking island, you know, if, if, let's think of the UK as a large island, all right? There's more than a, a hundred Englishmen, <laughs> do you know what I mean? There can be thousands of Massart. So I think, uh, let's say that... Uh, but then, the idea that only a few hundred Massart died in that initial Zaitan attack... It's kind of small scale, isn't it? Well, maybe it's not. Only a few hundred people in the glory of Tyria. Oh, or Venusian Sickness in chat is saying, no, 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 think of it this way. Throughout the war, the Seers only got a few hundred kills. And the Massark got the entire race. And that's a way of interpreting it as well. Maybe that's the best way. But that's also weird because I always imagined, and the way, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I'd have to go to the wikis. But it felt like it was a huge, like, hundred years war between apex civilizations. The Seers versus the Massart with their massive cities on either side. The idea that the Massart took almost no losses, just a, a few hundred of them. That's fucking crazy. That makes the Massart seem way strong. That makes the Seers seem kind of pathetic, to be honest. Interesting line. I don't know where else to take that. I'm completely lost with it. I don't know. What do you guys think? You and Mabon then. It was an unlikely alliance. He was different and more so resembled the Massar I've met external Tyria. Brutal, yes, but fair. He's endured as much as I have. You'll notice here that none of this is voice acted, by the way. I wonder if it's not voice acted because they didn't want to commit. Because this is like heavy lore. And if they get it slightly wrong, they want to be able to quickly tweak it and change it right up to the last hour, you know? <laughs> or even post-release, they want to be able to tweak it so, so, they don't, so it's not retcons or it's not mistakes. So they don't voice this. They're happy to voice the Pather stuff, because that's all new, and they know where they're going and so on. But this, they're dicey territory here. They, and, the, you know, the super nerds might pick them apart. So, so it's text. <laughs> that's my theory about that. An unlikely alliance. He was different, but more so resembled the Massar I've met external to Tyria. They're talking so much about other Massar now. You see this. Brutal, yes, but fair. 
He's endured as much as I have. Massar, external to Tyria? Some, at least. Who could say? Mabon searched, but he stayed here all this time, after all. Perhaps they were not worth finding, question mark. I'm sorry about Mabon. I am too. I'll leave you to rest. So good. It's good shit, guys. Okay, we, we, there's lots more to come, though. So we go down... So I need to be careful not to... end... I think go downstairs first. Here we go. Welcome back to the Kanta Report. This is me, Ray, reporting from our studio in UK Ning. This reporter was recently given the impromptu opportunity to interview the famed pack commander during my first world tour. Their eyes, glossy as the Jade Sea, watched me with weariness. The catastrophe in Kanta was still heavy on their soul. We stood in their home, a small, personal laboratory in the heart of Radisson, cozy but cold in its clinical sterility. The ending of the Dragon Cycle sent ripples through the world. They acknowledged the great loss we all suffered as a result. When I asked of the Commander's leadership, they were caging, clouds thickening behind their eyes, memories swelling. We spoke further about the end of the Dragon Cycle. The Commander was blunt. Had it not been ended, we wouldn't be here today. So, what's next for the Commander? Tyria, they said, still needs aid. Near the end of our interview, the Commander was pulled away in a frenzy of emotion. A letter fell into their lap as we spoke. They peeled it open with the precision of a hardened warrior. Delicate but intentional. Their eyes glanced over the contents. Dread, but possibly a hint of warmth, brushed their cheeks before they looked to me. Sorry, was all they could mumble before leaving. While I wasn't able to ascertain their call to action, I can only assume they were pulled to the arms of another battle. Next up on the Tampa Report, I go head to head with Ritlock Brimstone, ally of the Commander and Tribune of the Blood Legion. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the escalating calls for global unity following the death of Sue Wan? Shut the damn thing out of my face before I shove it! Uh, they... Until next time. Stay sharp. They Come really on. go crazy with the jowl noises, the flo the f the flobber noises there. Yeah, again, Ritlock's really good for the same reason that is Garen's good up there, I think, as well. He's a good ying to the yang. Uh, yeah, I think on my original playthrough, that interview, that didn't go that well. That sounded all right. It wasn't, she wasn't very condescending to me or anything there. Um... God, that was crappy, though, wasn't it? Imagine reading that in a newspaper, just droning on and on about someone opening a letter. <laughs> but, yeah, um, of course, that's how the expansion opened, and we get our little payoff there. Okay, back to chat. Uh, Bradley says, Wiki currently lists it as races betrayed Massar against Zaitan. Because, again, in Ember Bay, there's a little note about that, some forgotten interaction there as well. I think the forgotten were fighting there as well. But uh, Wiki says, the races betrayed the Massar first, and we just heard that with the Sydney thing. Then the Massart backed out of the Bloodstone thing. Then there was the Seer Massart War. And that, what well, you've just read, Wiki has this. It, that's basically my interpretation, too. I think that, that's, that sort of lines up there. Um, I don't think all of that information is expressed in one place or whatever, though. Okay, so. Uh, here we've got Zodja. Hey, Commander. Can I borrow your comms device? Of course. Who's she gonna I ring? I haven't worked on one of these things in gears. What is this? Oh, did she have voice messages? Oh, time, hey. Do you need any help working that? Commander! What the heck? Where have you been? I've been trying to reach you for weeks. I hope whatever cave you've been hiding in at least... Hi, timey. Timey? Soja? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Hey, Commander, could you give us a moment? What does that mean? Take sit with you again? You I'll sit with you again. I... I... Yeah, I know. That's really good. I, th I really like the timeys or just stuff in this. 
I like the silence there, and that just reminds me as well, it was genuinely a good moment at the start where you hear the voice and you think it's timey and it turned out to be Zodger's voice at the start of the X-Pack. Just reminded me of that beat there. Okay, so then in these side rooms, we can catch up with these kinds of guys. So we've got Urchik and Glade. Wayfinder! Oh, come, come! Glade speaks for us both, and it's especially good to see you. Oh, when Skrit woke up, the sky was red, and Cryptus were... Well, Urchik should have known that the commander would prevail. You really can drop the commander now, you know, Urchik. Skrit will always honor the commander's legacy, even if they've begun a new one, or are about to begin another. I guess I can't leave my past behind, but that's a much more complicated conversation. Yeah, well, we it have to wait for the therapy arc. Fighting with you both. Actually, we just did the, the therapy was, arc. And is ours. Giala was basically the therapy arc, wasn't it, really? Sit still, and this will go faster. If Arena were here, you know what she'd say. <sighs> Don't look at me. She already pinned me down to siphon away my blood for testing. I am simply making sure that you are both at optimum health. Don't let me interrupt. Please, interrupt. <laughs> Not at all. You're next. I'm sure the Wayfinder has places to be. Ah, behave. You're supposed to be a leader, Warden. We've a moment to celebrate. Even you deserve to breathe a little for keeping us all in one piece. Though, I could use a salve or two. That last battle reminded me that I am indeed no longer a student of the colleges. Oh, I have something. Rest, Wayfinder. I'm sure this calm is only temporary. When the sun rises, it'll be another day. See, this- It's only a matter of time before we need to tell the rest of the world what happened here. So, kick your boots off. Another suggestion that- I suppose we're going to have to tell them one way or another, in case it happens again. For now, let yourself refuel. When I was a shaman- Go, quickly. Or he'll bore you to death with a monologue about the time he drank soured ale and saw Nut's face on every... Uh, that's a good story. <laughs> I like... Who am I to distract from the doctor's orders anyway? Narcisse, have at him. Uh, I would totally listen to that. I would have no problems there at all. Yeah, so this thing of like... Um, you, you can feel it's like the victory lap, right? And we got like another four conversations at least to do here. And it's that it's an odd thing where, you know, we were talking about how is this going to feel doing like a big package of a story and then three other patches. Can they tell one cohesive thing? I think this will feel a bit weird because it's like a very hard stop here. This is like the party at the end of everything, but actually we're only halfway through, you know. And if there's not n very much story in patches one, two and three, this is going to fit, especially if they're like Giala style patches. This is going to feel a bit odd, you know. But Gaurath? A well-fought victory, way. Thank you. Tell me more of your secrets. Impressive indeed. And you didn't even bend those magnificent ears. Speaking frankly, I agreed with Isgaran initially. You were too unpredictable a variable. I am rarely proven wrong. I'm glad I proved trustworthy. So, what's next then? There's still much to rebuild. Physically... And emotionally, I think I'll plan a memorial for Maban. He would appreciate that, my friend. I'll be restoring Omnitas's defenses. They paired these two up a lot, I notice, in this part. You know, it's how it, every time we saw one of them, it was with the other. It's weird, because I don't really think of them as particularly bonded characters. Uh, just a couple more here, guys. Then it's the end of the story and actually the end of the stream as well. So um, let's enjoy them. We have... Dagda and Leah. So, any lingering reservations about our new friend here, Dagda? Last minute notes? Hmm. That twinkle in your eye. For what starless purpose would you ask such a question? Oh, just stoking the forge. 
As always, you're so above it all. Good of you to notice. I am grateful you gave me a chance to... adjust. Much has changed, and quickly. It can be jarring for the eldest of us. My history with immortal entities has been mixed. Here's hoping this whole Wayfinder thing is a good change. If the heroes of this age are even half your measure, the court may even call on others in time. It may be inevitable. Dagda. I owe it to Mabon to try. Uh, in chat, Corsage says they've drummed up Epark as this ancient threat that's doing evil stuff longer than Abaddon was evil. You're saying that just because of the timelines, right? Like, it, uh, he's been there. There's not like an explicit thing in the post game that compares him to Abaddon, is there? You're just saying, you know, if the Realm of Dreams has been doing its thing since before the Exodus, blah, 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 then naturally that makes sense. We're going somewhere cold after this. <laughs> And on flatter. These two, we barely Blood know. Blood? It's so weird they Which get dialogue in the, the end. Near the Blood -tide coast. Don't you two look rested? No, unfortunately. But we've got them on the back foot. I'm more worried for the mainland than Omnitas now. Cryptus are still coming in from Nios, but their numbers are weaker. Eparch is scared. Poor thing. We don't want to assume, but things are looking up. I'm just glad you're taking a moment for yourselves. Savor it. Oh, we will. Planning our first vacation in... What, seven years? At least. The Ward has very strict rules for interacting with the rest of the world. But we could use a few days away. Go to the Matani Keys and take me with you. Go to the Matani Keys and take me with me. Yeah, uh, in chat as well. I do believe, yeah, that's really rich for a mini x pack. Bram's dad, if you guys don't know, he's called Borge the Sun Chaser. We know almost nothing about him, only his deathbed scene, really. But he's a black Norn. And the idea is that maybe, as Kossish says there, he could have brothers, sisters. Bram might have a bunch of aunts and uncles and things. And there might be a bunch of Norn living somewhere, you know where he chased the sun to and i like to imagine some really hot tropical cool place with a bunch of other norn and that could be a cool mini x back thing for sure i do believe in stuff like that um i think this last one's livia by the way but how do we get up to them it says they're level with us right now but clearly they're not is the telegraph broken in some way it still says they're level with us no, and now it says we're too high. Law conversation when I mouse over it. Is it when I interact with the rift, maybe? Travel to the upper level? It says I'm level with it now again. Ah, oh, there we go. Weird. Oh no, it's Zoja. After the timey conversation. Here's your comms device. Thank you. You two have a good chat? Yeah. Time is... great. I had a lot to say. <laughs> oh, she's grown up so much. Everyone is doing fine, huh? My mentee. Helping to solve a national power crisis. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm fine. I, I told her that I'm on my own adventure too, just like she is. She wanted details, of course, and I, I didn't offer much. I told her that I'm happy, though. Was that enough for her? Of course it wasn't, but she understands. She's off on a new journey, too. Everything is going to change again. But I think I'm okay with that. It doesn't mean I won't see them. I'll be there to help you put names to faces. Probably gonna need that. Come in. Uh, Wayfinder? Thank you for being you. You've been through a lot. Just reflects on the good you've done. I was thinking that earlier where Liss was like, oh, it's not important. But what Liss was actually doing was going off to do a bunch of rifts. Like, if you really actually think about it, that's... She's putting her life on the line and fighting on the front line again. You know, it's actually a huge thing the commander does over and over and over and over and over again. And asks for very little credit for it. Um, so I like that little line there. <clears throat> 
in, in chat, okay, so apparently one of the events at the library says the very first incursion was at like 650 BE. That's really good. I, I Definitely there's things that we haven't seen there, and I'm hoping that the post-game asks us to do a couple of those events and things. I'm sure it will. Like, those collections look pretty meaty. So, that's it, I think, guys. Unless I'm... I, I really thought there was a Livia piece in this final one. But I don't see her anywhere. I guess the truth is she wasn't really involved in any of the instances today. Any of the stuff. No, and then that's out of the bounds. Alright, so... This rift just takes us downstairs. And then we leave by going through this portal here. Oh, uh, oh, we get the uh, Lagos here. Goal. This is the Lagos that was at the um, the top of the uh, at the end of the, the meta, basically. In the ring at the end of the meta. Don't have any dialogue for us. Yeah, there's just so many good things. A uh, Lagos thing, a Depths thing, the Boards of Sun ca Chaser thing. There's so many cool little pieces and parts and ideas and places that you can go. I just, I want it to be paired with slightly big, well, we'll see what they do. Wizard's Vault was this time. What's next? Hello, Epark. I thought I felt something different. It's fascinating, isn't it? What you smell like. What you feel like. I know that Ceres is a smarter warrior than his brother, but I've been wrong. So I think that in the next story, we'll have a different voice in our head. It'll be Air Park's voice in our head now, instead of Pather. Um, and Pather will just speak to us physically, I guess. Uh, which will be a lot more sinister and intimidating, or we'll be back to the same position of having this scary demon in our head. It's funny we just loaded out here, by the way. It was ages ago we entered the instance, but it's just chain instance, chain instance, chain instance at the end there. Um... So yeah, uh, post-game, we've got is Garen to speak to, we have this cool tarot card thing, we've got like the mystery of waiting sorrow, we've got more to learn about the other seers and Sydney, um, and just lots of stuff to do. Obviously, I will be getting our last mastery as well. Um, now, I'm thinking, guys, really tedious shit I'm not going to stream. I was thinking, you know, I've been calling this 100% playthrough, but some of these achievements, it's like... I mean, we'll play it as we by ear as we go, but I'm very sensitive. I don't want to put out shit content, all right? Um, and if I'm getting people telling me this is shit content, you know, I feel like maybe I should respond to that. So I don't know. We'll see. But, like, really boring stuff, I, I, I think I can probably just do off screen. We don't need to see every single tiny little thing. I don't know. Like, maybe some of the story achievements that I had missed previously. Like, here in Act 3, I've still missed these, apparently. Defeat all the embodiments of the chapter boss. I don't even really know what that means. We've got strikes and stuff. I do want to show you both of the strikes. Because um, they are very cool. They're like souped up 10-man versions of that Ceres fight just now. And also of the Dagda fight at the observatory from earlier in the expansion. So we'll, we'll look at those. There is also the Silent Surf, which I still haven't done. Uh, and I've never s watched any videos of it. I, I've done that. It would be completely blind. So I, I kind of want to weave that in somewhere as well. That will be the post-game series. And I will start with the big lore straight away because I'm in a big mind for that. So I'll see you next time for that. Um, and yeah, again, thank everyone who's chatted. Everyone's joked. Everyone who's messed about. Offered words of encouragement. The little donations and things. People have helped with the lore and stuff. Having a live chat has been really fun for me. So thank you all. I do really enjoy that. And uh, everyone who's been dropping comments and stuff as well. Again, we are still recruiting. I just got a bunch more people into the guild. So if you guys want to join Spud and continue through the post-game stuff, just send me a mail with which region you play, NA or EU, and I will get you in the guild. And you can ask for help with that in Discord if you want. So that's it, guys. Uh, 
Another three hour part. That's the end of the story. 14 episodes. I think, weirdly enough, I think the end of Dragon's playthrough is about 14 episodes. It didn't have like a, this, this one had a big chunk though. There was a big chunk there where we were exploring this map and I probably could have done that faster. And some of them are a bit short and stuff. Uh, but there you have it. Um, lots to review and, and think about. And I guess we'll do more of that tomorrow. So cheers guys. Uh, let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time. Take care now. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, that was nice with the firework. Was that one of you guys? Or was that a mail I got? I think that was a firework mail. That was a nice little touch. All right. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.